Good evening, Zambia. Good evening, Copper Belt. Good evening, Lusaka. Good evening, Solwezi. Good, ne good evening, Mufalira. Mulishani Mkwai, Mute Ndemwane, Mwalivi Yavuti. Mulibwanj, Mulibwanj. Welcome to an incredible and special presentation of TV Bakwetu. And um, with me, I have Dr. Tommy and uh, um, an incredible expert on economies and international expert, uh, Mr. Trevor Simumba. Mr. Simumba, good evening. Good, e good evening, uh, Linda, and it's great to be with you. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Dr. Tommy. 
Good evening, Valinda, and uh, nice to be on the show. Fantastic. Now, viewers, if you are just joining us, this is uh, a special presentation of TV Bakwetu. We're going to be debunking the budget. It's been an interesting day, full of facts. Some people are terribly excited. And I've seen I've been seeing some memes going Ale Wele La Pupampando 2026, borrowing from the past regime, talking about HH that he's done um uh, his best at presenting uh what he feels is a very progressive budget. And um, some people uh, that I will not mention have been like, oh, yeah, that is, uh, it wasn't a very good budget. So we're going to be helping you dissect uh, the budget step by step with these experts. We're going to be joined by the TV Bakwetu uh, family in a little while. But in the meantime, I would like to ask you viewers, if you're just joining us, welcome, welcome. Be positive, uh, be expectant. And what I'd like to see right now is you telling us where you're watching us from. And just the one thing that you thought stood out for you in today's uh, budget presentation. So I will be having a look at um, uh, the comment section, just so that you tell us first thing, tell us where you're watching us from. Secondly, tell us one thing or two things even uh, that have stood out for you in today's uh, presentation. Without further ado, we have very limited time. Um, so we're going to dive straight into today's pr uh, program. And I will start with Dr. Tommy. What is the one thing that stood out for you? Living by the word, Bali's promises coming to concrete fruition of what he promised. So there's a lot that stands out from the budget, but I thought over this is fulfillment of the promise. Fantastic, fantastic. And Travis Mumba? Yes, uh, I, I think it was, it was a budget of full of promises, um, very courageous in terms of uh, some of the targets that have been set. Uh, but more importantly, I think it is a budget that reflects the priorities of the president uh, that he mentioned during the campaign and, and which he has also been discuss talking about uh, since he became president. Uh, for me, the key issue is budget execution. That is my key issue now. Uh, the, most of the issues that I felt needed to be covered have been covered, but now it's about budget execution. That is the critical part. Fantastic. So the proof is in the pudding for Mr. Small. Correct. Absolutely. Perfect, Perfect summary. <laughs> Excellent. So now with uh, Dr. Tommy, I would like you to focus on uh, SMEs and education. So start thinking about that. And uh, Mr. Simumba, you are a high profile result driven entrepreneur with international um, economic business uh, expertise. So I will let you run a mock. So I, I want you to be the free range. Just drive through what your thoughts are, what the positives are, and do you think this is feasible? Is it too progressive? Is it too ambitious? Or is it just ambitious enough? So I want you to be thinking along those lines. So I will start with you. Dive in. You are my free range chicken, so to speak. <laughs> just go. Yeah, they, they just <laughs> all exactly. over. Very tasty though. Very, oh, exactly. Very tasty. And even, even yeah. more tasty than the other breeds of chicken. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Go yeah. So, like I, yeah. So, like I said, for me, uh, it was it's a very exciting budget. First of all, um, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that um, the last PF budget, in terms of uh, dollars, was approximately five point one, five point two billion dollars in terms mm -hmm. of size. This budget is double. It's ten point about ten point one, ten point two billion uh, dollars. Okay. Um, the, the other major positive of this budget is the decentralization, the actual real decentralization of resource allocation. The increase in CDF, for me, that's my biggest game changer. For me, that's the biggest game changer. The increase of CDF from 1.6 billion, I mean, so 1.6 million 
to 25.7 million is a huge, huge game changer. Because what that will do is that it's going to take development right to the constituency. It also empowers the district councils that are relevant to a particular constituency. And so for it, let me take my, my uh, uh, home village, uh, Nakonde. So Nakonde constituency is now going to receive 25 million kwacha for CDF, all right? And CDF is managed by the district council, uh, by provincial representative, government representatives who are based in that particular district or province, okay? And also the community has a role to play in determining what is done with CDF. So by doing this, what the, gov what the government of uh, President Hichilema has done is basically kickstart rural development, okay? And uh, let me just quote uh, from what the minister said. And when I saw this, I knew that something major was coming. He stated in his introductory remarks, he said, um, let me just find, yes. He said, Madam, Madam Speaker, this is point number six of the budget speech. He said, Madam Speaker, I spent the last 10 years as an opposition member of parliament for a poor rural constituency, you are in Western province, right? From this experience, I have learned valuable lessons which I will apply in the management of the treasury. I trust that with the guidance of the president, who himself is very passionate about rural development, our rural and other areas facing poverty will, received increase, will receive increased attention. For me, this is an area where, and that's why I talked about budget execution. This is an area where the civil society organizations, uh, professionals like myself, Dr. Hamaluba and others, this is where we need to make sure this government executes this budget in accordance with what it has said here. Because the biggest uh, problem we've had in Zambia and what keeps us back is the fact that we've ignored the rural areas. Look, I love driving over this bridge in Lusaka. I love it, yes. But to be quite honest, I would have rather we spend 100 million building dams, okay? Building... Uh, facilities that will enable our farmers to add value. Instead of spending 600 million just to make us in Lusaka feel better, we should have put more money into the rural area. So this budget, for me, the biggest game changer is the fact that it's driving uh, growth, economy, and uh, support into the rural areas. It's empowering Zambians at the local level so that uh, carpenters, plumbers, you know, uh, uh, engineers, uh, fabricators are able to do business at the constituency level and don't have to migrate to Lusaka or Copper Belt in order for them to have opportunity. So for me, that's the biggest change. You're on mute, I think, Linda. You're still on mute. Uh, that is fantastic. Um, a really good analysis there. So the CDF uh, has increased to 25.7 million and the government has promised. I'll just um, spin through very quickly um, uh, talking points that you, I would like you to, uh, to tackle based on what has been presented today. Um, so the government promised to recruit uh, 11,000 uh, workers. Yeah. Uh, health workers, that to be precise, and uh, the government has also promised to recruit thirty thousand teachers. So I would like you to be thinking of, uh, around the uh, lines of feasibility. How possible is this? Is it going to be uh, manageable? Is it too ambitious? Like I said earlier, yeah. yeah. And pay as you earn threshold has been increased to four thousand from four thousand to uh, four thousand five hundred. Tuition fees uh, and PTA fees and exam fees are to be abolished next year, which is quite, yes. as a pedagogy, it's very exciting for me. Um, a few other things that have been talked about, uh, bursaries for vulnerable children in boarding schools. I think uh, that is an interesting one. I want you to on that. And um, um, things that have been talked about, like primary schools, to receive three times uh, grants than they currently receive. And yes. um, finally, arrears for uh, retirees to be dismantled. Yes. Yeah. Those are yes, in economics, those are what we call political sweet uh, sweeteners. Eh? You mm. know, those are inevitable in any economy, in any government. 
they are, they are always sweeteners. Let me give you an example of what I mean so mm -hmm. that people can understand. The first thing that President Joe Biden did when he became president of America was to release checks for $600 to almost every American, okay, mm -hmm. for COVID relief, all right? $600 may seem not a lot of money, but it's a lot when you don't have it, eh? mm. <laughs> you know? It is a lot. And, uh, yeah. Yes, it's a lot. And immediately what that did, it stimulated the economy because the Americans who received these checks went and spent this money. They didn't just hold on to it. They went mm. and spent it, right? It stimulated the economy. It, it generated a lot of goodwill for Biden to the extent that now the opposition in America is afraid of standing up against him because people say, ah, so you mean you want us to continue suffering? You, you, you just want to enjoy for yourself. So what this first budget has done in terms of this recruitment of teachers, uh, the, the issue to do with the pensioners and all this, this, these are issues, if you recall, we used to complain about so much. You know, yeah. we had so many graduate nurses, teachers, uh, doctors. Uh, I've just seen my brother Kanika here joining as yes. pharmacist and all other unemployed. Eh? <laughs> they're mm -hmm. qualified by not being employed. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Or if they're employed, they have to be. They have to be relatives of a PF uh, government mm -hmm. official. So, so these are sweet as But we must make one note of concern uh, from my from from an economic perspective mm -hmm. and from my understanding of the process. Uh, because I've worked, I've worked for government before, all right, and I know the process of employment, employing someone into the civil service. Mm. Uh, to to aim to employ basically forty one thousand people into the public service, because they are talking about eleven thousand health healthcare workers, and then yeah. thirty thousand in one year, I think is a bridge too far. Uh, I would, what I would have liked to see, yes, what I would have liked to see is this. Uh, the minister should have stated, yes, our target is 41,000, right? But phase it over a period of maybe two, three years, okay? Why do because you think that is important? Why it's important is because we've never done this kind of recruitment before in Zambia to employ 30 or so thousand people in one year. We've never done that kind of thing. So, Mrs. Lumba, a lot of yes, the fact yes. that we've never done it before does not mean that it's possible. Remember, we are no. I'm not saying it's impossible. Okay. It's not. No, it's not impossible. I'm just being realistic here because listen, the danger is this. I would. I. I. I hope. I hope they've laid out a clear plan, right? Okay, mm -hmm. of how they're going to do this, and if they achieve it, it's going to be a great achievement for the country and for the economy. However, the danger with a target so high, especially in an economy like this, and especially in an economy that's just trying to come out of depression is that if they do fail to achieve the 30 000, the 41000 by the end of this budget year next year 2022 politically it will be of a high cost mm. because what will happen now is that the opposition as they've been talking oh these guys are just talkers they're just mm -hmm. talkers they will use that to their great advantage mm -hmm. okay and uh, for me i think it will be too early for the upnd government to get embroiled in a controversy, in a, in a policy issue, that doesn't actually help us. Because at the end of the day, the fact is we need more teachers, we need more people in healthcare, all right? So, so for me, I would have wanted some phasing, especially this year, you could have said this year, we're going to start with 10,000, you know, for example, because you want to test your systems, you want to make sure that, you, you know, you've got things in place. Remember, as we are speaking today, we don't have a full team of permanent secretaries that, that belong and work for the United, United Party for National Development. And I can tell you, I can tell you, the conversations I've had so far with the PF uh, supporters, they are saying to me, oh, to Kamimona, how are you going to recruit 30,000? They are waiting for failure. Now, my question is this. How are you going to achieve this recruitment if your permanent secretaries, your directors, your key technical people in the government are not your people. Mm. How are you going to achieve this? Because this budget is a huge budget. It requires huge resources. Mm. Look, we are taking development to the local level. Do we have qualified district commissioners who are going to make sure they monitor and, and uh, implement these activities? Do we have proper people in the councils 
who are working there as uh, as uh, council secretaries eh? in the provincial administrations do we have people who are actually going to be able to drive this uh, transformation that we're talking about so now what i would want to see from the government from the president in particular is for him now because he's got no excuse he needs to create his team and he needs to do it immediately to ensure that this budget is executed that's why i warned in the beginning i said look it's a very good budget it's exciting it's progressive but budget execution that is the key Absolutely, absolutely. The proof is in the pudding. I will keep repeating Correct. that phrase. And I'm hoping yes, that uh, someone from the Hitchlema administration is listening. At this point, I would just like to take a few moments to welcome my co-host. And I, I would like a very good reason as to why, Mr. Kanika, why you are late. Explain, please. Because in the background, we'll be having words. <laughs> Yeah, no, sorry actually for coming in late, um, though I didn't see the link. I was looking for where the link and all that, but uh, gladly Council Musha did the best. Uh, I think uh, uh, um, let me agree to some of the things uh, 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 Trevor has said and also disagree to some of the things. The Minister for Finance, he mentioned to say, for 30,000 teachers, we mm -hmm. have looked for money, and the money is already available to employ 30,000 teachers. So in terms of employment and other money for teachers, that money is intact to pay them for whatever period of time. So in that one, we should not worry. But I agree with you on the issues of permanent secretaries and directors, because I, I saw a post from and due to a group you are saying that uh, the PF budget is a proper budget kind of we try to, to, to say such such kind of things. So for, for me, that is something that is uh, very much worry. But anyway, we should not worry much because uh, the president was uh, in forefront and was uh, uh, the, there directing and guiding how the budget is supposed to be done. And he mentioned all in his speeches, he kept saying, wait for the budget, wait for the budget. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'm also happy, like you have said, is the issue of the CDF, where it has gone to 25.7 million. And the, the minister, just there in the budget, guided what is supposed or what is expected to be done from the CDF. Now, there again, uh, I, I have a different view because the problems for the constituencies in Osaka are already like, being sorted out as compared to the constituencies in rural parts of Zambia. So I was thinking if uh, the CDF fund for constituencies in Lusaka were a little bit reduced as compared to the constituencies in the other uh, uh, parts of, of, of the country, if we really need the development to be there. For example, if Lusaka, we said 15 million for each constituency, then let's say in Kaputa constituency, we say we are going to give them 30, uh, 35 million. For me, I would have said, yes, this is equity in terms of that. There is, there is equality, but there is no equity in the way the, the, the CDF has been shared, seeing the development and the problems that are in the rural constituencies as compared to the town constituencies. Check Lusaka, check Copper Belt. You discover that some places, schools, clinics, they have them. But mm -hmm. other areas yes. too, but we don't have schools cleaning, that is, and they need to use the yeah. same money. So we need to to look into that. In terms of the 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 the, the, the health sector, actually, mm -hmm. this is my field, and uh, actually being an advocate in this sec in this sector, mm -hmm. for me, I feel our minister for health and the, our committee in the in the in the in the for for health. Actually, we we have done a good job in terms of making sure that. Uh, 11,200 health workers will be employed. We were telling these people before the elections, they were thinking like it is all about a lie, but now they are seeing things are coming to become a reality. For the first time, the budgeting for, for drugs has been doubled to about 3.4 uh, uh, billion. This shows itself that the government is committed to fight the, this serious pandemic. We have a mm -hmm. pandemic. How can you reduce the budget 
for buying the drugs, which include the vaccines. But this mm -hmm. budget has shown you to say, we have put aside from the three point something billion, mm -hmm. 700 and something is for buying, 700 and something million is for buying just vaccines. So even my advocates of mandatory vaccination, it is also being cut out in this budget where we have the money to buy our own vaccine. We mm -hmm. have the money to buy essential drugs and all that. And two months ago, if it's not a month ago, uh, the Minister for Health shows updated to say we are owing suppliers for drugs about 2.2 billion kwacha. From the 2.2 billion kwacha, three weeks ago, the Minister of Finance released 1 billion to pay uh, the suppliers for drugs. So we are owing mm -hmm. the suppliers for drugs about 1.2 billion. Now we have 3.4 billion, meaning that we can even next year, we can pay off all the debt we have and start afresh. That yeah. is something that we can say very much progressive. And not only that, this budget, the, we didn't think of only stopping the projects for PF, no, in terms of infrastructure development. There is mm -hmm. one point uh, something billion that has been put in terms of infrastructure development in the health sector. That mm -hmm. is commendable. That is commendable. No wonder I'm saying to say, here in Zambia today, it's a free thing, everything. You know? <laughs> There's no need to pay for anything to any woman or man. It's just free. <laughs> yeah. so, I can tell, I can tell Jerome, yeah. you're really excited about this budget, okay. especially when it comes to health. Can I pause you on that thought? I want okay. to bring in uh, Mr. Sumumba and then I'll let you carry on. Um, uh, Jerome talked about uh, one honorable from Kabwe. I, I don't feel I have the energy to actually mention some of these people's names. Uh, so uh, <laughs> you are muted. You are muted. I'm saying you don't need to mention his name. We no, know him. So don't mention his name. Exactly. So don't make him pay much for nothing. Budget. Absolutely, exactly. We, we're just sort of um, adding value where it shouldn't be. Um, so they mentioned um, the fact that this budget is pro poor. Now, my question is to you, uh, what is wrong with having a budget that is pro poor? And uh, as you're thinking about that, I just want to um, uh, bring this to your attention. I don't know if you've been following uh, British politics. Uh, yesterday, we had our budget presentation, which uh, has been received very favorably. And I'm going to have another um, um, uh, panelist to join us so that they can dissect very briefly the British um, uh, budgets, our colonial masters. And we are always interlinked whether we like it or not now i want him yeah. i would like him to focus on uh what he thinks about just basically to make comparisons between the oh, yeah, yeah. the uh Hichilema administration budget and the boris johnson budget uh, considering that um Britain does not produce very much, and Zambia has got all these incredible uh, natural resources. But before we get into that, I want you to briefly make a comment on what Jerome said about this uh, former honourable, who's not very honourable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are your views on that? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, such people need to be ignored, to be honest. Um, uh, this budget is a pro-poor budget. It's a pro-rural development budget. Remember, the president appointed a minister of local government and rural development, okay? So mm -hmm. which means that through local government, rural development is going to be a big focus, all right? Mm -hmm. And you see the fact, and uh, I would like to support Jerome's uh, suggestion that um, we consider for the urban constituencies, we consider a lower figure because he's right. For example, in Lusaka, most of our water problems have been sorted out by MCC uh, mm -hmm. project. Whereas in rural areas, there are places where they just don't have water. They have to walk miles and miles. Just so it's to get starting water. from scratch. Yes, exactly. So I agree with that suggestion. What I would suggest to Jerome is that he should formally write right now to, an, to, an, to, to the Ministry of Finance and also to a member of parliament, okay? A member of parliament who's not a minister or cabinet to say, because the, the budget will be debated. So this is something that a, an MP can raise in parliament and be able to argue, and uh, it may be considered uh, for revision, okay? It has happened before. We've had mm -hmm. situations where a budget, after debate, some aspects have changed because MPs have come together, and because that's a good suggestion. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, it should be considered, okay? But, so the point I make is that, yes, it's a proper budget, 
Um, and it's a budget that is taking power back to the people in terms of decisions about what they need in their mm -hmm. particular area mm -hmm. and giving them the power to decide who does the, the works, right? It gives opportunity to businesses that are locally based to be able to participate in these, uh, in these um, uh, projects. But more importantly also, the fact that when you employ more people, it means, because th those teachers and health workers have to mm -hmm. be sent to various places, isn't it? They're not all going yeah. to be in one place. So the, so maybe 1,000 will go to Rapula province. You know, mm -hmm. taking 1,000 new people to a province like Rapula who are salaried eh, means that suddenly people will be looking for accommodation, people mm -hmm. will be doing, buying more stuff for their food, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. So it all, all that generates activity. And uh, the good thing is that the president understands this what we call multiplier effect in economics. You know, a multiplier effect is that you do something that what you do incentivizes others to also benefit because it multiplies. Fantastic. So the yes. beneficiaries go beyond. Yeah, because so, for example, if, if I was a resident in, uh, in Nakonde, in my village, and uh, I'm given a project of one million kwacha, for example, just an example, a construct, maybe it's a construction project, and I'm a resident of Nakonde. Can you yeah. imagine what my one million kwacha does? Not only to me as a person, mm -hmm. but to my immediate family, my extended mm -hmm. family, and to yeah. my town. Because suddenly, mm -hmm. I'll say, I'll want to build a bigger house in Akonde, which means mm -hmm. that plumbers, uh, bricklayers, you know, all the people who, who build houses, they will be employed by me, you see? Mm -hmm. That is how money goes. So the problem for a long time under the PF has been that the people who have benefited so much from this country are foreigners. It's not Zambians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not Zambians who've benefited. So how do, and so, Trevor, so how this do is you, a turnaround. Sure. What do you think the government should do to ensure that it's not just the foreigners that will be benefiting? I understand your point where uh, one person empowered with a particular amount of money, will ha it will have a ripple effect. You'll be employing yeah. people who will be feeding their families and those uh, there will be marketeers pr providing food, lunches, yes. daily lunches, so they'll be making yes. an income from that. But what do you think the government can do to ensure that um, it's lo the local people benefiting and not the... Not yes, only they've already taken the yeah they've already taken a number of steps okay mm -hmm. proper steps the first mm -hmm. one they took was to prepare a, a price index by the zambia Pro public procurement agency so that mm -hmm. price index what it does it gives every person level playing field you understand mm -hmm. me and in that index it states the regulation is that the price that you charge government can only be five percent above or five percent below what the index price is, right? So it takes mm -hmm. away all these useless fly-by-night so-called uh, investors, you know, these briefcase uh, businessmen. That's the first mm -hmm. step. Secondly, the president has issued a, a directive within government stating three value systems in terms of procurement, okay? Fair price, uh, uh, delivery time, uh, correct delivery time, okay? And it, the standard. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the next step which the government needs to make, which I've been advocating for for some time, my, I started advocating this five years ago. We must enact a law content act. A local content act uh, gives a basic minimum of local content, meaning that even if a foreign company is given a contract, that foreign company must give a minimum amount of contract to Zambian. Okay. So, for example, in Nigeria, the Local Content Act in Nigeria says minimum 40%, okay? But today, as we are speaking, most foreign companies in Nigeria are giving locals up to even 60%, 70%. This is why Nigeria has produced so many billionaires. Dangote, all those people benefited mm -hmm. from the Local Content Act. Yes, because even when, uh, when the, oil, the big oil companies want to give contracts, they have to give a 40% a of those contracts to locals. That's how come in Nigeria you go, you find a woman owns the biggest oil services company in Africa, Oanda. That company mm -hmm. is owned by a Nigerian woman, okay? Mm -hmm. That is why Dabote is a billionaire. You know, that is why Arik Air 
what glow the telecom is all mm -hmm. owned by nigerians okay the same thing we see in botswana botswana also has a very strong local content act and you find that the government has shares in the mines in the diamond mines. they generate approximately 60 percent revenue is coming from the mining sector whereas in zambia you compare mm -hmm. to zambia we are far behind you see and that's mm -hmm. one area later on i'll highlight that's one area of concern i have in this budget mm -hmm. there is nothing much they've done mm -hmm. in terms of the mining sector the mining well, sector hold, is still not contributing hold yeah. hold that thought. hold that hold, yes. that hold that thought we'll come we'll come to things that you feel could have done could have been done better and very soon we're going to be joined by uh dr tommy who is actually an expert based in botswana you you alluded to botswana there and we're going to uh, um query him on how he feels botswana is doing better than zambia now jerome you were um on an incredible line of thought i would like you to continue that line of thought in terms of health so you're very satisfied with um um, the budget all allocation when it comes to health, that is clear to say. And would you say there's anything that could have been done better apart from uh, what you've already mentioned? Yeah, uh, I, I think, uh, Linda, when you check very well, uh, as much as this is a starting point for the mm -hmm. new born administration in terms mm -hmm. of the budget allocation, but in the coming years, I want to say that uh, we we reach the abuja declaration in terms of financing to health which is a, it was a 2000 declaration where it was indicated that 15 percent of the total budget should go to health now mm -hmm. in zambia like this budget is only eight percent so we have a shortage of about seven percent so mm -hmm. i think if we want now to do everything and have everything be there I think we need to make sure that uh, our goal should be 15% Abuja declaration so that mm -hmm. we have enough money for health that is going to, to, to be used on the citizens. As you know very well, a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. Absolutely. So if we think in, in that route, I think it's going to be done very well. And the, the, the other point, Linda, which I'm, I'm very much happy about is mm -hmm. I've seen an increase in the allocation for the money that we give or that hospitals get in terms of grants and all that. Uh, this year, there are about 843 million uh, kwacha that has been put to, 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 to for hospitals, meaning that every, uh, every month we have 70 million kwacha that will be available for hospital operations. That's a huge amount of money and that will make sure that uh, all the necessities are available in the in the in the hospitals then again i've seen i've, I've heard what trevor said but mm -hmm. uh, uh, as much as he's uh, advocating for that uh, local uh, 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 content in terms of uh, of contractors i think i may stand with him and i may support him uh, to, towards for that but again when we check the zppa act of 2020 mm -hmm. it it at least helped to cover some of this area in terms of empowering the, the local people. We mm -hmm. saw that most of the local people were not even empowered, uh, if I can say so. Uh, in the Ministry of Health, I don't remember if the last time a local company was given to supply drugs to the, to, 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 to the government. All the companies that supply drugs to the government have international uh, uh, owners or the people who are foreigners are the owners of those Companies, where well, they have registered those companies in Zambia, which should not be the case. We need our local people who, whom we feel can supply or can give these uh, 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 drugs and be given tenders. Imagine the 3.6, 3.4 billion, which we're talking about. If we can get maybe 40% of that money to remain to Zambians, I think that will be a huge boost in the economy and you see an increase in the number of Zambians being employed. But as things, are, if we leave if things the way they are, if we stop talking, then we are going to empower all this money that has been put in the budget, we are going to give to the foreigners. So it's a high time the European government to make sure that they put the Zambians first, just like the president has been saying and advocating for, where he has been saying that 
we need to empower the Zambians and we need to give uh, and the, a, a promote or build capacity in the Zambians. And if we do and we hear, we, we, we heed to what the president has been advocating for, I think it will be very, very much uh, uh, better for everyone. If the civil servants fail to adhere to that, then the, the other part of Jerome, which is the Qatarism component, will be awakened and will prove the Qatarism. <laughs> Fantastic, Jerome. No, we do love the the cadder, uh, the cadderism side of you. I think it's important to have someone who watch vivo. Like if things go pear shaped, yeah, it's important to have someone who can actually uh, say to them, uh, "This is wrong. We've got to do this," and advocate for the policies that need to be advocated for. And I would I would also like to see that um, every investor who comes in, they can be um, a, like a deliberate policy where they have to um, train the locals in a particular field so that, for instance, if, um, but Trevor, you're muted, you wanted to say something. Okay. Yeah. So that uh, when they come in, in a particular industry, mining, for instance, farming and other specialist um, programs, they have to have a policy where they have to have a percentage of locals who are trained in that field so that when they leave, we know what we're doing. We know how we can carry that project on. Otherwise, we're too dependent on uh, foreign, uh, uh, foreign investors to come and give us things and teach us how to do stuff. Um, I'm going to move on to Dr. Kosonso. I have um, just seen a lot of our friends joining us. Viewers, if you have just tuned in, you are watching uh, a presentation of TV Bakwetu. I must say a very special presentation of TV Bakwetu, debunking the Hichilema's uh, debut budget, so to speak. Uh, the UPND are terribly excited about these uh, budgets. They feel it's very progressive. It's got incredible elements that is going to uh, showcase their, their best bits, so to speak. And they feel uh, that uh, this is it. Uh, they have killed PF and PF is not coming back. HH is coming back in 2026. Because oh, don't start. Don't start that already. <laughs> this, budget, this budget is not going to allow anyone else to, um, to penetrate through the political arena. Dr. Casonso, we have a new budget, the debut budget by Double H Seven. What are your views? Are you satisfied or not? Just those two questions for, for, for now. Yeah, um, uh, you you know I'm an instructor, and because of that, I am um, chronically hopeful in the idea that we can always do better. Okay. Yeah. Good. So, but mm -hmm. uh, we have to analyze the budget in mm -hmm. each situation. Get into the analysis, just briefly. Are you you're yeah. hopeful? Are you satisfied yeah. for now, or there's room for improvement? Uh, definitely, there is room for improvement. But okay. let me let me answer that question uh, with a caveat to it. Okay. Um, we have to look at the budget first of all, not just in detail, but mm -hmm. take those details and look at them in the overall picture. Uh, overall, uh, the budget places citizens at the core of public policy. It mm -hmm. moves the country away from the ultra investments move into uh, towards sustained incremental investments move on to. So to, on that score, it's an excellent down payment on the bright future, the brighter future for our country. Uh, there are a lot of progressive things that are contained therein uh, that we must support from uh, different positions, uh, both as citizens, practitioners, and those in government to ensure it, 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 uh, this budget achieves its objectives. But uh, it's an excellent down payment on the brighter future for our country. It doesn't do too much dramatic things, but it moves certain aspects of the way we run the economy and where we spend the money to increase the capacity of the citizens to live in their own country, to function in their own country, to work in their own country, and to put food on the table. You're muted. And for, uh, Frank, um, you, you and I live in the same country. 
same as uh, our Patrick. So we've had our budget, which was a terribly exciting budget. What are what are your views on uh, the Hitchlema administration's budget in comparison to the Bojo one? And Bojo. Hang on, let's just talk. Let, we'll talk the Zambia one. Let's that be that'll be unfair comparison. We'll we'll stick to. <laughs> <laughs> we stick to the Zambia just, one. Just, and, just and, briefly, we two have and we'll talk yeah, in detail afterwards. I think for me it was it was exciting to see what it, it was a progressive budget. I think I haven't seen a budget like that that gives the power to the people and is quite hopeful for the future. And there's something that is so important when we talk about free education. The moment Parents don't have to worry about how they're going to send their children to school. When that comes into place, that is going to be a very big thing for family members. And that gives them a lot of that gives them income that they can spend just on their family. It was again, as Dr. Casonso said, it was people focused, taking the power to the people and making sure that that power is in the people to create to have that economic power to develop. So for me, that is a great start because that's what we needed in our country. So it's a great foundation that we can build that we can build on. It was mm -hmm. a very it was a very good budget. Am I very excited? I'm a bit like I'm a bit like Dr. Kasson. So I want to see how things are going to fall. It's very excited. It's I'm very hopeful, and I'm I'm just looking forward to see how everything else is going to fall into place. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Dr. Tommy, same question. What, what do you think about today's budget? What stood out for you? First of all, I should really mention that, uh, thank you for that question, that this budget was prepared under very, very extraordinary situation. You know, amidst an extraordinary challenging global and uh, domestic environment that has been brought about by the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I did not expect a budget of this nature to come out given the terrain that we, uh, I mean, that we are presented with from the COVID challenges and also looking at how the PF dismantled everything. So it's like this new dawn had to, you know, it's like you are starting afresh. So that is very critical for me to produce such a transformational budget, which is also active activity based. It's not very easy. I don't think there's any country, honestly, in Africa that can present something that the new dawn has presented. But one thing that gives me hope is that Bali is a man of his word. He is very consistent. And this is the narrative that I think Zambians have to embrace. Consistency and focus. Because the past 10 years, you know, just one of the things that will be, uh, have been promised to be achieved in uh, one year Mm -hmm. could not be done in 10 years. And all that is done because the new dawn looks at discipline to be in the center of everything. Well, the PF had very good plans, but indiscipline can put things in disarray. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy to see this, the growth of the GDP by 3.5%. Who does that under this COVID situation? <laughs> Who, Who does, does that? that? <laughs> ah, the domestic revenue growing by 21%, dismantling the debt. You know, there's a lot that we can talk about. I'll come uh, uh, again on education, as you promised. Yeah. But generally, mm -hmm. this is a very, very promising trans transformational budget. And all what Zambia needs now is support. Support this yeah. budget. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Dr. Tommy. We will give you that platform because I specifically assigned you for the SMEs and education. And um, yeah, whilst we're moving on to uh, Mr. Chilufia, 
who is uh, a financial expert, all things account. Actually, we have so many experts in accountants here. I need to make little blurbs, especially for each one of you. We've got economists, doctors in education, and God knows what. I'm really inspired to go dust off my books and start studying as well. You may have a Dr. Banks very soon, if you're not careful. Oh, no. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Uh, you know, just one little second. There's something funnier that cropped up in my head when Dr. Tommy was talking mm -hmm. uh, is that the kids used to say, Bali will fix it. Now they are going back to school and mm -hmm. there is no exam fees. He has no. already oh. run now. <laughs> that sounds, that sounds I, I, you I, and I. I from today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bali, Do you know Bali is say? fixing it. Hey. You know the bad thing? We'll be telling these people, it's like, you, we remember the days when you haven't paid school fees and you don't tell your parents because you want to oh, be yeah. dressed away. Oh, <laughs> yes. There is that. There is that. Dr. Sonso, as a pedagogue, an educator, a lecturer, you and I, I know, and Va, Tommy is a lecturer as well. We're terribly excited about this as a teacher, you know, having children who are not going to be uh, bogged down, or parents actually, who are not going to be bogged down on school fees. But now, um, I want all of you to be thinking about this question as we come back to uh, propounding more on this budget. What do you think is going to happen to the private sector in terms of education? Are they going to lose customers because education is free? Is it going to be a deterrent? Don't answer yet, Vakason, so yeah, think about yeah. it. I'll move to Patrick to very quickly talk about what he feels uh, happened, how he feels the budget went, and Vakason, so keep that thought in mind. I'll come back to you on that. Yeah. Patrick, good evening. Nice to see you. Looking very dapper. Good evening, um, uh, fellow, <laughs> fellow Vakuetus, and uh, good evening, Zambians. Yeah, Abalinda, I'll touch a bit of uh, the UK budget compared. Com um, com not just yeah. yet. Hold that thought, okay. Bob. Okay. Now, I but, want you to just tell yeah, me what but, you talk but, about today. But the buzz phrase going on on Facebook today mm -hmm. is that uh, from now onwards, uh, with the new budget, students don't have to pay uh, fees, exam fees, PTA. The only thing they need to pay is attention in class. <laughs> yeah. So that's a good one. But looking at the budget, uh, <laughs> uh -huh. this budget really shook me. Mm -hmm. And this budget is similar to the UK budget. In I'll come and summarize the UK budget. Hallelujah. With, yes, with go for it. <laughs> I don't know whether they were copying each other. I think Vakason Sonala, Dr. Tommy, what do you call Muntunga Kopa thesis? Plagiarism. Plagiarism. To be fair, but Patrick, let me hold. I on. think you are UK for a moment, but, but Patrick. Because, because, but Patrick. because, um, because Zambians are so intelligent. But Patrick, just, just hold on on that one. If you remember, yeah. uh, 887 did say several weeks before and said, just wait for the budget. You're going to be amused. Just wait no. for the budget. So I don't think Bojo has got the capacity. No, uh, uh, yeah. we, uh, no, no, no. no, no, yeah. no. I, think, <laughs> I think I'm so excited in that mm -hmm. my one leg of mine is in Zambia and another leg is in the UK. Mm -hmm. And both mm -hmm countries have produced similar budgets budgets that are very ambitious uh, progressive the UK they are you know they're talking about stronger growth you know and both countries are suffering similar uh, diseases dead 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 mm. yeah so this budget is is really powerful but as my Trevor said I'm also mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm uh, concerned about something, the delivery. We, we will come back. Especially when it comes to the 40,000 jobs. Because as we are talking, we don't have the permanent secretaries who are chief executives, mm -hmm. who, are, who, are P, who are UPND. We don't have directors. And this budget will be in force in, in January. Yeah. And uh, my, my other worry is increasing the 
which is a very good thing because the budget has shifted, the control has shifted from Lusaka closer to the people, which is yeah. very progressive. Absolutely. But that increase from 1.6 1, 1. million to 25 million, which is a million dollars, is quite worrying because logistically, it might be very difficult. If we got the controlling officers, like I said. Thank you, Baba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's key. Yeah, but because, we'll that. because the more money, imagine PF controls a lot of um, 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 constituencies, especially in the north. And you know PF by nature, they are, they, are, they, are, they are corrupt. We cannot lie about that. They will steal that $1 million. Okay, but Patrick... And then we are going to suffer Patrick, the UPNB government, you know, yeah, you know what I mean. So, we'll come, but Patrick, we'll come back. That's to my that. job. My job is: are they stringent controls, processes, and procedures? That's we, my job. Uh, have we got powerful controllers who are yeah. UPND? Who've got the vision of um, uh, HH? Because otherwise, that money is going to be stolen. Thank you very much. I actually just asked for you to tell me what you thought about the budget. Then we'll come into details yeah, about the whole very thing. Very powerful budget. Progressive. Snap, snap, snap. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Out um, of this world. Excellent. I will come back to you so that you can give me the details. Right now, I just wanted to hear how happy or not happy you are. Um, is Dr. Moonsha there? Would he like to come in? Or he's just kind of just there? He's there. I can see okay. is is there. Okay. Um, I think I will leave uh, Dr. Munshi to the end. So now I would like us to uh, get into the details of uh, the budget. So Dr. Casonso, there has been um, a lot of things that have been promised, a lot of money splashed around. We can clearly see uh, what is important for WH7 and what is not what his priorities are. And I can see we have been joined by Gladys, which is excellent. Hi, welcome. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I might as well give you a moment to actually um, tell us what you think about the budget very briefly, and we'll come to the details afterwards. Uh, well, I, I listened to the budget. It's actually an extra, extraordinary one, and uh, it's uh, fantastic. There are just uh, some specific um, uh, points which I really love uh, concerning education mm -hmm. and uh, the SMBEs, uh, really. Uh, we're going to go into details about that as we go along. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much. Now, the first person to open the box sorts. We have like a box. It's Christmas. We've got this box of sweets and treats. Now, Dr. Casonzo, please open that for us. But, but Patrick, don't be shaking your heads. Dr. Casonzo is going to elaborate on what he felt um, are the important aspects and um, uh, how the allocation has gone. Has it been according to what you expected? And if not, why? Uh, uh, thank you so much. First of all, the allocations are good, uh, but the genie is not in the allocations. It's somewhere else. Uh, first of all, before I elaborate on that, uh, something that uh, Raj Rufia threw in and then caught my spirit, I should mention it. Okokuma constituents who could have PF to a Kabwala, like 25 million, 25 million, Yaisa. Coach the match na deployment of our police na ba anti corruption commission ba fully ko mukula checking amu ma constituencies uh, we will be just fine. So, but um, I think Dr. Tommy mentioned something that's very important. Uh, he said this budget requires support by all of us, and I think that the greatest areas to make this budget successful. The, the three areas that we must uh, uh, render support, both those of us who are just citizens and workers and those in, in charge in different places, I'll summarize them in three. Number one, it's the context of the budget. We need to understand the context of the budget. Both those in government, they need to understand the context of this budget. Uh, this budget is like a Christmas tree. Everything you want to have is there. But is it really going to come? You, you find it on the table. So that journey, taking it from a Christmas tree to putting it on the table, 
is what what is required for us to realize that is support within the context of the budget government has come up with this uh, first i will talk about uh, context then I'll, I'll comment on uh, uh, the construction of the budget and then i'll conclude with the um, content of the budget mm -hmm. uh, within the context of the budget is the structure of the regional and global economy or global business uh, what is Zambia's place in that region on global business? That uh, means that we can have an excellent budget and good expenditure, but if we don't pay attention to the context of that, uh, mm -hmm. then we'll find that the country operates with the financial crocodiles that will take and will suck the resources out of the economy quickly, and we won't see those benefits. Mm -hmm. So um, within the context of that budget, we have a huge trade deficit with South Africa. Uh, uh, to support the budget, we need to reduce the amount of money that Zambia pours into the South African economy. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can use economic diplomacy. Maybe we can use local production of goods. Maybe mm -hmm. we can reduce the amount of imports we are getting from there. Uh, most Zambia, you on that, Vanasonso. Um, I apologize for pausing you on that. We have just been joined by our top star viewers on DSTV, and I just wanted to welcome uh, all the new viewers uh, to the program. We're discussing uh, today's budgets, the debut budget by the Hitchleva administration. And my name is Linda Banks, and I'm joined by Dr. Kasonso, uh, an expert in um, accountancy and all things finances. Uh, we also have uh, Mr. Trevor Simumba, who is a global economist. Economist and Dr. Tommy uh, Hamadouba, Frank uh, Saliki, and Gladys Storm. And as you were just joining us, uh, Mr. Kasonso was uh, in the middle of elaborating the context of the budget. Carry on, please. Yes, viewers, and I, I would like to welcome you too. Uh, the context of the budget is the structure of the regional and global economy uh, or global business. Um, Within the, the, that, that context of the budget, uh, you will, will discover that our country operates with a lot of financial crocodiles in the area. These crocodiles eat all the meat. Uh, what that means is that we uh, make the money in Zambia and we pour out the money in, in Zambia. But the way, because of the way the economy is structured, the money finds its way out of the country so quickly. And one of those uh, pools of crocodiles is the South African economy. We have to find a way to reduce the trade deficit with South Africa. The amount of money that Zambia has been pouring in the national South Africa for 30 years is just unsustainable. It probably explained to a large degree why there has been not money to buy books in classrooms and other things. So the context of the budget is to, to support the context of the budget is to ensure that the expenditures that the government is projecting are going to have that money stay in the country and not quickly go to Beijing or quickly move into the Middle East. We, we, we buy oil and other things from the Middle East for a billion dollars almost every year, but we don't take anything there. So with these investments being made, probably in agro industries, I hope that the government can supervise a process where even just out of that billion, we can't change it overnight, even just that billion that goes to those countries, we can collect at least 200 million every year from agro products that are being sent to go the other way. That is the context of this budget. If the context of this budget is not taken care of, this budget is not going to achieve short-term or long-term objectives. The construction of the budget budget. The budget was mostly constructed by a new government, with most officers not appointed in all other areas. Governments in the postmodern world today, including the government here where I live in Washington, are using a participatory budget style, meaning that the, you go to the lower elements that you are funding, the budget centers, to receive input to support what you are going to put in the budget. And then the controlling officers bring it to the table. And then you, you, you will have standards set by the local people, vetted by different levels within the government bureaucracy before you can be able to take it back. So in the construction of the budget, we have this top-down budget that has come from on high. And it's almost as, as, uh, as, as something that is imposed on the people. And that has motivational effects. 
And that requires lots of education on the use of things, and that can create chaos in operations. So uh, this must actually be the last budget which we have top down. The budgets must be prepared in a participatory manner. And we must promote not the what they are, in my view, not what the government is using, the output, whatever uh, budgeting, but zero-based budgeting so you can curb corruption, you can make sure that uh, things that are in the budget are, are planned. For. So in the construction, uh, but you mentioned that controlling officers have not been appointed, but mm -hmm. those controlling officers are going to be in charge of, uh, con uh, of, of implementing the budget. They will mm -hmm. require a lot of education and sometimes discipleship and all oh, that's too much painful. Uh, but it's a good first step. But we need to do that. In the construction of the budget, it must be participatory from the court, not must be top down, but ground up to ensure motivation and accountability at all levels and understanding. And finally, uh, the content of the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I heard uh, that um, uh, the Minister of Finance or the budget has allocated 25.7 billion, for example, uh, billion to the constituencies. Uh, and every constituency gets the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. uh, in in business, we call that the one size fits all approach. Mm -hmm. That is a flawed strategy, mm -hmm. and I don't say this to Kune Navantu or Kwambaya. Why, no, no, no. why do you uh, think it's yeah, a flawed yeah. strategy? It's, it's very clear because you are using a top down. You are going to assign the same amount of money to a rural constituency and the same amount of money to the uh, urban constituency. That is not just constructive. The needs of each constituency must be taken into account in the future budgets, particularly mm -hmm. in the budget period that begins immediately after this one, because that budget period starts also at the same time. Mm -hmm. So what we need to have is input from each constituency, what they will need, and then based on that, allocate to those constituencies, those funds. With this one size fits all, might be good for rural constituencies. They will have access to more money and they can do certain things. Uh, they can follow the guidelines and things like that. They can improve and they can have access to finance. Uh, but if you do a one size fits all, you are thwarting the ability of people in the constituencies to dream. Uh, they dream of something they would like to do, a place they would like to go, and something they would like to bring into their constituencies. So it is important that in the content of the budget, the constituencies themselves bring what they want to plan for in the five years before included, rather than just us imposing the $25 billion on everybody. That will save some good. That will help a lot of people and that will uh, champion a lot of causes in those constituencies. But that strategy is uh, uh, going to cause a problem in the long term because the people of Undola Central, uh, they have got very different economic needs to the people of Luapula constituency in San Fian. Thank so the one side fits all is a serious deficit in this budget. And on that score, as a professor of advanced accountancy, we can do better. Thank you so much. Yeah, we, everyone can certainly do better. And we have all alluded to education. We have alluded to the allocation of funds to different sectors. Now, we haven't actually mentioned anything about farming. The allocation of funds to farming, uh, what do we think? And uh, if um, Mr. Sumumba can start on that and everything else that you'd like to talk about in regards to this budget, please. So uh, thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, uh, I'm enjoying this uh, debate, hearing the different views, and it's important. That's why, you know, uh, discussing a budget, it's important that you have people from different sectors, different backgrounds, because, mm -hmm. you know, what Dr. Kasonso has talked about in terms of the bottom-up approach is something that, you know, Dr. Kasonso, I can tell you, we've been discussing this for over 25 years in this country, Wow. you know? you know yeah. about activity it's actually activity based budgeting at one mm -hmm. time we did have zero budgeting during the time of uh, uh, ronald penza when ronald, the late ronald penza was minister of finance and he mm -hmm. managed it very well i can tell you that uh, felix kulukusa the current secretary to the treasury was actually an economist at that time a macroeconomist when uh, penza was minister of finance and uh, dennis chisenda uh, Ngulube, myself i was in ministry of commerce trade and industry and so I used to participate in a team that were, we were looking at this particular issue. How do we get 
uh, plans to develop from the constituency level and then bring them up through the district into province and then national. And then also, how do you create what you're talking about, the five-year uh, frameworks? Eh? So we have what we call the medium-term expenditure framework, which usually are three years. But, you know, we need to go beyond that and uh, really look at how we can ensure that we tackle the priorities and be able to, to resource uh, those, uh, those uh, requirements. And so it will be very important. And remember, um, uh, Linda, earlier on, I talked about budget execution. I told mm -hmm. you this is a very good budget. It's exciting. It's progressive. There are some good uh, pointers there. However, my biggest concern is execution. And that is where mm -hmm. we're going to struggle with this budget, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, because I've traveled to all parts of this country, okay? I've, I've dealt with uh, councils. I've dealt with provincial administrations. Uh, many of our rural provinces, what I, when I say rural, I'm talking about Muchinga, Northern, Luapula, Western. Um, Eastern, I can no longer call it a rural province, but it has some very rural areas in terms of outside Chipata. When you start talking about places like Lundazi, Katete, and all this. But these are our rural provinces. Southern province is not rural because southern province has huge commercial farming activities. Our tourism is, is based there. Yes, we have places like Dundumwezi and Wada, there's pockets of real poverty. But again, does it, is it fair that Dundumwezi is getting the same amount of money as Kalomo or Livingstone? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So, so mm -hmm. I think this is a, exactly. So this is a good start. Mm -hmm. Agreed. But what we need now, number one, is budget execution. We also yeah. need very effective capacity building at the local level, all right? Because we need, we need uh, our people who are working in the councils, who are working in the provincial administrations, in the offices, to understand what project management is. Monitoring. So I would hope, my hope, is that the president, when he decides to appoint DCs, for example, district commissioners, he mm -hmm. is going to look at appointing professionals in terms of uh, graduates, okay? Yes. Who can actually understand this uh, development. Because if we continue with political appointments at the district commissioner level, I'm mm -hmm. telling you this budget will fail. That I can tell you. Because mm -hmm. there's no way you can give 25 million to constituencies. These constituencies have, ne have never managed money like this. Even when they had the 1.6 million, they were not mm -hmm. managing it. That was, it was a situation where they are told, Make, tell us what you're going to do with, the, with this money. Then they send the money from Lusaka. You understand? But this is real empowerment. This is saying, here's your allocation. Mm -hmm. Manage it. Yeah. Utilize it. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're if we going to continue with DCs who are political, uh, who are just political cadres, mm -hmm. it will fail. Because DC commissioners, remember, DC commissioners belong to the office of the president. Yeah. Okay. They are the yeah. eyes and the ears of the president at the district level. Okay? Yeah. So my advice to the government would be appoint professionals, young people, graduates, who have yeah. even maybe two, three, four years experience already in government. You know, they could even be older. Than, but young people, graduates, who will be able to understand and be able to provide guidance to the constituency development fund uh, committee. Okay? Yeah. Secondly, like mm -hmm. my, my colleagues have said, at permanent sector, again, I must emphasize, I was having a conversation uh, two days ago when we were launching the Zambia Institute of Trade Policy, and I was having a conversation with one of the uh, colleagues who were present. And I, you know, I was saying, look, I have worked in government, and I've worked not just in Zambia, I've worked in over 30 countries, government, in Africa, okay? Starting from Nigeria all the way down. Okay, to Mozambique, uh, South Africa, but all types. And I've seen a lot and I've learned a lot about how government machinery works. A bureaucrat, a government bureaucrat is very powerful. Even there in the UK, you call them the civil servants Mandarin, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the directors, generals, and all these guys. The, a government bureaucracy is a very powerful machine. To make that machine work and move, you need people who are aligned with your thinking and your vision, but have got the experience of public service. You understand? Because
experience of public service when they have never been in government? No, there are a lot of uh, uh, supporters and sympathizers of the UPND in government with a lot of experience. No, 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 that's not correct. Okay. <laughs> Look, the MMD I'm, took I'm, over I'm playing, after um, you need. I'm playing devil's advocate. Young people would say, Yes, I understand. Experience we've never been in government. What would you say to that? No, but listen, listen. Malinda, Malinda, can I just we're not Patrick, 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 can I yes. just support you? Malinda, yes. what my driver is saying is correct. In in our our blogs, UPND blogs, there are so many government workers and so many people who have yes. worked in government. Very yes. intelligent, qualified. Yes. So what what yes. my driver is saying is true. That, UPND yes. as got the capacity it does um Correct. thank you so much. linda um, let, yeah I'm i understand you are playing a yes i understand yeah. now let me give you an example of what i'm talking about the gentleman who has been appointed state house permanent secretary dr oliver calabo dr oliver calabo was a deputy secretary to the cabinet so where did where was he found how come he was found so you can't say <laughs> they are there, they're there. They're there, okay? The issue yeah. is this. A decision has to be made. We have a budget now. We were told, let's wait for the budget. We have a budget now. Mm -hmm. This budget needs to be delivered. It needs to be executed. I can guarantee you, I've worked in government. Mm -hmm. Those PF appointed permanent secretaries direct, we will not implement this budget. They will make sure their salaries are paid. They will make mm -hmm. sure that, uh, that uh, allocations are made. But mm. they will not implement this budget the way it is supposed to be implemented. That I can assure you. And mm. the longer the president waits, the worse mm. the situation will be. This is a very progressive budget, but it mm -hmm. will be destroyed by inertia. Yeah. I told you that earlier on, I've received already three phone calls from PF cadres, mm -hmm. senior guys who know me. They are my friends. They've called me three times here today. When the budget, it's just that I was lucky. I was not. I was at a funeral, unfortunately. So I was not. I was. I told them, look, I have not read the budget yet. So give me time. But their emphasis was, but Trevor, Muka time implement the budget, Muka Mona, Muka Firwa. Yeah. But, but Trevor, thank Did you so it, much. Yes. And absolutely, very, very, very good points. And this is why I was playing devil's advocate, so that you can act, it can bring out that emphasis on that point. So the government yeah. really needs to take this seriously and heed that yes. advice because yes. it's yes. absolutely critical. And this is why I posed yes. that question. What about, you know, um, uh, someone who would say we don't have experience? So there's absolutely no excuse. Um, there's that no excuse can give at this point. Vakas also, very briefly, you were pointing and hollowing to what Vatreva was saying. One minute, please, feel free. What do you think about what Vatreva said? But PF, they had a chance to lead. They didn't. So once we were permanent secretary, we were temporary secretary, and I'm a secretary as well, over private sector, over secretary, once we were Kunganda, we were a budget to get the budget later, we were a budget. And you can tell Bom Sokotwani thinks about money as marshalling. And he has sent marshalling all across the country. That is why, first, we need to block the crocodiles. But the patriotic front, their modus operandi, uh, they guess that if they put the structures in the country, structures will improve the economy. They forgot that economies are improved by people. So you have to put the money in the people. Katicha ngakafola, Shofimba Trevor Bachananda. This budget, like my um my colleague um uh, honorable Mwetu was said. It's mm -hmm. a hopeful budget. It brings hope. But we need the bad eggs out as of mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, we need the new dawn to dawn everywhere. Mm -hmm. You can also, lastly, you cannot say, oh, yes, we are working on a PF budget. Then you introduce your budget and half the controlling officers who are going to run that yes. are from PF. Thank oh, you. Thank you, Marcus.
Thank you so much, Gladys. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Linda. Uh, well, I would say that uh, the time we were waiting for has come. <laughs> and I'll say that uh, for all of you out there, graduates, grade 12s, uh, grab your tw grade 12 certificates and those uh, parents, line up your children to get them into school. And uh, then the other thing I would say about the allocated budget, just like uh, Bakasonso um, uh, narrated, he said that uh, this is like Santa Claus. Santa Claus, the budget, it's a wishful thinking, it's a great budget, but don't think that it's going to get the results on its own. Mm. It's about time for people to work, to get back to work and not to sleep. And uh, for instance, like the, in the SME, SM, BE, that's the small medium business enterprises, like for the youths who are looking for jobs, it is about time to bring your brains and bring your innovative brains, let's bring the money into the country. It's mm -hmm. not about just waiting for the budget like Santa Claus is going to drop a gift at your table. No, this is the time to think and say, this is the time to work. Let me, those people who are those institutions who have been uh, allocated the budget, they have to use their creativity. They have to use the imagination that now the, 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 the government has allocated the budget. And uh, now you get to the youth. Bring your in, uh, innovative ideas. How can we make money? How can we bring that money into the country? Since we are encouraging the, we are encouraging the locals to get jobs instead of the foreigners. So kindly, it's about time to work and not just wait for the budget to bring money on its own. It's you and me to do the work. So let's brainstorm together and find the business ideas and get back to work. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Gladys. You remind me of uh, a phrase um, that was uttered by some American president. It's all about you asking what can you do for the country instead of instead of what can the country do for me? It's, I think we have kind of uh, been used to getting handouts as young people. Gladys, you're so right. It's now time for the young people to actually stand up and look at this very progressive budget. Dr. Tommy did allude to the fact that it's not just the government that is going to make this, that is going to execute one of the three or four aspects of the budget that also uh, Dr. Casonso alluded to about the execution. So we all have to put our fingers, all of us, we need to roll our sleeves and get back to work. If you are a young person, uh, you don't have uh, the right skills, there's something in it for you. If you are um, a grade 12 uh, person, there's something in it for you. If another grade one, go preschool, everyone has got, you know, uh, have, has been catered for. So it's about time as a people to just round ourselves up and to get to work. Don't be shy of volunteering, you know, volunteering in a particular sector for you to get experience. Um, let's just roll our sleeves and get to work. We've got natural resources. We've been blessed with so much. Um, and we can m turn this uh, ship round. I'm going to move to um, a Frank. Um, I will let you choose an area of talking point because it's so vast. So uh, what are the things that really stood out for you that you'd like to get into detail on? I think for me, for me as a human resource, resources man, um, education was a key for me. Mm -hmm. And it's very exciting that people are going to go to get free education. As, mm -hmm. as I said earlier, parents spend a lot of time worrying about um, how they're going to pay their, their children's school fees. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's great that they will have this opportunity where somebody can start from grade one to grade 12 without ever worrying about how I'm going to pay their school fees. Yeah. But then when I, when I was reflecting on, that, on this, it brought up another question. Mm -hmm. Do we just need free education or do we need to do school in a completely different way? If we carry on doing the way school is at the moment, is it going to bring us a lot of is it going to bring us the results that people are doing? Like, for example, mm. when somebody doesn't go to university because they failed RE, mm. okay, when they're trying to go and start physics, 
Like in in the, like for example, when I was going to university in the UK, it said you need this many GCSEs. Mm -hmm. By the way, since you're going to be doing business and human resources, you need to make sure you pass your English, your business, and your and your maths. So as long as I I've got those three and I pass three more, I was able to go. So how we're going to benefit from free education is actually looking at how we do changing how we do education. So let's face it, some people are going to be academic. They're going to be academically bright. And some people, they're not going to be that academic bright. And even if we keep them in education, they're not going to get the results that they need, or they're not going to get the outcome that you hope for them to get. But education, to use education as an, an instrument that identifies an area where somebody goes. So we're given this free education, but in that education, we we'll also identify people. So for example, if a teacher notices that somebody can make a very good carpenter, how can we mentor that person into becoming a great carpenter so that when they leave school, they become a great carpenter and a great businessman who actually makes money? Then education starts doing, uh, starts doing the job that it's doing. And so for me, that is very important, free education, but also having a look at how can we identify the talents of our young people. Just because somebody's not good at maths doesn't mean they're not going to be, make a great business person or they're not going to make a great something at the end of that education. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how, how much free education that we give. It doesn't matter how much free education that we give people. If we mm -hmm. don't identify talent in our schools in our mm. in our school system they're not going to yes and the last point before i just move on there's no such thing as a free lunch so when we hear free education we have to go there's somebody is paying that money somewhere so it's important we understand that it means when, when it means free it doesn't mean wow money is coming somewhere. It means the government is taking money from somewhere. It's going to replace money from somewhere. And that's, this is where, I'm, this is where I'm, I'm a bit weary. When we think of the Kaunda government, the Kaunda government was all about free education, but that money had to come from somewhere. And it's very, very, it's very important that before the government actually goes and rolls out this, they, they are able to establish where they're going to get those resources and they don't get the country in more debt. And that's what happened with the Kaunda government. You had mm. a lot of resources coming into free education, but actually they were borrowing a lot more to fund that education. So it'd be quite important for me to hear where that resources, where the money that's going to be, that's going to replace the school fees and everything else is going to come from. For me, that is quite important. Thank you. Thank you so much, Frank. And also uh, on the same topic, um, I would like someone to correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't hear very much on further education. So that would be quite interesting. Uh, further education for cadres uh, who left grade nine or grade eight, or some of them who perhaps didn't have the privilege of, um, of going to school. So it would be quite nice to know what kind of um, facilities or amount of money has been allocated to that. Uh, for those people that Frank was talking about who may not be uh, excellent at one particular subject, skills, you know, skills development will be quite a good thing to know and will be interesting to uh, know how much has been allocated to that. Uh, Dr. Tommy, you... Um, I assigned you um, SME and education. I know, uh, Frank, could you just mute yourself, please? Thank you. Uh, yes, so if you could just talk more about the budget allocation for SMEs and uh, education, Dr. Tom, please. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I want to echo what uh, Professor Kasunso said, and uh, I think uh, my brother Mumba, on the need to actualize an excellent budget like this one, it doesn't come with lip service. Some people might say, well, you guys are in the UK, the terrain is different. Now let's look at this. 
just sharing one border, what makes the other country tick and the other one in this side? We almost share everything culturally. Now, what is very important for the new don't government in order to actualize this budget is to come up with the implementation plans. Monitoring and evaluation is very important. That's what PF failed to do the last 10 years. Monitoring and evaluation. This budget, you agree with me, is also high level. It's, it's really high level. I'm not surprised to hear some negative sentiment coming from the people. They can't understand. It's high level, high tech, but pro poor. And the things that are happening that you have seen in this budget, some of these things cannot be seen to be real in education. They are talking about, oh, free, free education. This is not about free education only. What I pick here is a quality education. When you reduce the student-teacher ratio, then you are improving the quality of instruction. And mm. this is what is important. Right now, you find one teacher to 60 students in a class. Where is mm -hmm. the quality? There's no quality. And I should also mention that we should really learn to appreciate and remove negativity. No single government in this world can achieve everything in one year. Absolutely. It's just to be structural and incremental. And some people don't even want to hear that say methodical. This is a methodical budget, meticulously done. <laughs> Professor Kasoso is laughing. It's, it's really methodically done to bring power to the people and it will go in the structural stages. Very, very important. You know, this is a progressive. And we have said, okay, now we are starting with basic education, pre-primary to grade 12, free, you know? And we are talking of the most important. There should be no child at home. You know, the, the parents also need to be taught. No child should be at home. Because when we look at the trend now in education, of course, it's not easy. But I would like to see this government boost things like OER, open educational resources, so that the cost of textbooks does not really burden the parents. Mm. Because that is another area which is very, very important. Yeah. Now, this government, Belinda, for things to work out in education, the government must stabilize. It has stabilized the exchange rates. That's critical. At first, it stabilized. And this is where it started, stabilizing the exchange rate. From there, like what my friends have called upon, we need now the owners of the budget to drive it because you understand your vision. We should not expect the PF employees to drive this budget. And we should not be apologetic if at all we are calling for their removal. It's just in order. They have to leave. And why are they leaving? We want to do like what we do in Botswana, PMS, performance management system, is what will make this budget achievable. These things are not known because of the, you know, the way we have been doing our politics. We need to have structures, the infrastructure, reporting system, you know, then we are not going to worry about misuse of money in institutions. Going to the SMEs, 350 million. 350 million on SME. What is important is not just dishing out and say we are empowering the youth. No, have structures in place. We need to boost what we call as a business incubation centers. I'll be happy to hear that in each constituency. There's a business incubation center where we are training the youth and women on how to do even simple bookkeeping, simple 
business, you know, lessons. Then we are going to be all participants of creating wealthy. If everyone can think of creating a job for another person, then we shall get it right. Do not spend what you don't have. I think that, that is the message which comes in this budget also, being an activity budget. You don't spend what you don't have. And when you don't spend what you don't have, you will not over borrow. Because PF was busy spending what they don't have. Then borrowing, borrowing. Today, what do we see? Sacks of money everywhere. No discipline. Hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Tommy. That Thank is you. very true. Um, I'm hoping Dr. Uh, Pasonso and uh, Trevor are listening to this because I will be asking you to comment on what Dr. Tommy has talked about. I'm going to move on now to uh, Dr. Um, I was Pal listening. Okay. Oh, you are listening. I will. Uh, I, I will. Would you like to comment now? And then we'll move on to Dr. Bab. Uh, yes, I think let me comment now because I need to, to leave now. But um, I'm, unfortunately, I need to leave. But Yes, uh, I was very interested in what you talked about, the performance management system, mm -hmm. very critical. Now, uh, the fact of the matter is, you cannot implement those systems with this crop of people that we have in place at the moment. Because all these guys, they were, all they were doing was just chewing government resources for themselves, using their positions to inflate uh, project costs, to do all sorts of things. And the evidence is there. I have the evidence in particular in terms of uh, construction projects and what they did with the Chinese project loans. I've submitted this information to the government uh, and uh, they've reviewed it. And the president actually even requested for me to give him some suggestions on how we can deal with it. The facts are there. So uh, in order for this budget to be executed, again, I emphasize, you need a team of people that will be able to carry it forward. I just want, on the issue of education, I just want to say that what Frank talked about, the fact that we also should now look at uh, the other side of the type of education. That will come. Like uh, my brother, Dr. Tommy, said, has said, we can't do everything in one year. All right? For me, the biggest ad uh, positive from this budget is that the fundamentals, the minister has managed to deal with the fundamentals. And I can tell you, uh, Minister Msogotwani, uh, from the as an economist, he's one of those that we call a liberal economist. You understand me? He's very much a, a <laughs> cap, pro capital economist. Okay, but for him, this budget that he has produced, I was actually surprised. This is one of the most progressive pro poor budgets I've seen, and this is coming from a, a, an economist who is a liberal. He's a liberal because uh, Dr. Msokotwani did all his economic studies in the U.S. Okay, no, and uh, even when I yes, exactly, you know. So even when I was um, working in government and he was minister at the time, I remember we used to have a lot of debates, you know, about certain policies because he was much more on the liberal side. But it's very clear the experience that he had as an opposition MP in his rural constituency has taught him a number of lessons that you cannot take it for granted that the multiply effect will reach the poor, the poorest of the poor, okay? And so in this budget, we've seen an increase to social cash transfer, to social protection, okay? And remember, uh, the critics were saying, oh, if we have a deal with MF, they're going to stop us from, uh, uh, from employing. They're going to impose a wage with all lies. The money, and I can assure you, uh, Frank, yeah, fr I think Frank mentioned, was wondering, where is the money mm -hmm. has to come from somewhere. That money is already there. That's why they're doing this. Uh, by signing the debt uh, suspension, uh, sustain, what is it called? Debt, DSSI, the Debt Suspension mm -hmm. Sustainability Initiative, okay, which is a G20 initiative. Zambia, for this year, has saved $540 million. So the, when the minister says the money is there to pay the salaries for the new people, the money is there to finance, to pay for the free education, is telling the truth. It's there because we are not going to service debt this year worth about 541 million. The second thing is that uh, there's a, a very big clue in this budget, which I think a lot of people have missed. The minister stated 
that uh, part of the money that is going to be used to finance the social schemes, you know, the and the CDF, the employment of, is going to be a drawdown from the SDRs, which means that he's already got a deal in his pocket with the IMF in terms of a program. And so he's able, because for you to budget in your budget, a drawdown of what we call special drawing rights, SDRs, it means that you've already got a deal in hand. You've been told that don't worry, you can program your budget because we're going to give you this draw. We're going to allow you to draw down. Because the drawdown is not automatic. Eh? You have to agree with the mm -hmm. IMF on a program. Yeah, so yeah. in this budget, he stated that he's going to use part of the money from the drawdown of the SDRs, okay? So what we need now, critically, right? Mm -hmm. and like I said again, is budget execution. But more importantly, we need discipline from the Minister of Finance mm -hmm. to enable the Bank of Zambia governor be able to bring down inflation because inflation affects the poor okay look me all of us here if the price of carpenter goes up we're not going to starve are we yeah. none of us here are going to starve if price of carpenter goes up or price of beans or price of bread however the majority of our people when the price of cooking oil sugar salt uh, bread you know carpenter goes up it affects their lives severely direct effect okay because they cannot adjust their their spending habits the way we can adjust easily okay so bringing down inflation to single digit as the minister has, has uh, targeted is very very critical but to do that there has to be discipline fiscal discipline now surely do you expect people who were controlling officers when we borrowed over 12 billion in external debt, our inflation went above uh, 20%. Our exchange rate depreciated. You expect these people to have fiscal discipline? Come on, let's not joke around. Let's not joke around. There's no way Tommy, that these people suddenly have a change of heart. Uh, Tom, just a quick, just a quick question. Anyone new or Tommy or Dr. Casonzo? So. With the budget and in the world that we're living in, with all the major economic powers, um, the US, Britain, uh, expecting interest rates to, to go up over the next few years. And in the time that um, obviously HH and his government have made a very, very ambitious budget, which we are all excited about. What are sort of things that they should look out for uh, in, all, in order for them to, to develop um, to, to develop, to really, for, in order for them to actually execute this budget, w when the major economic powers are seeing stuff like interest rate go up and everything else, how can they counteract that? I can respond to that one. It's very simple. That's why the government is targeting economic growth above 4%. It's all about economic growth. You see, interest rates is just the price of money, okay? So, interest rates in countries like Europe and where can, can go up. Remember, the source for Zambia in terms of capital is not just Europe. And the, in fact, uh, Europe and the Western world account for very little of our capital investment. China is the big player in Zambia. Okay? And China, interest rates in China are always below 2%. Uh, you know, sometimes even close to zero, you know, 0.5%, you know, 0.6%, because they're still driving their growth. But for a country like Zambia, what is critical now is to boost, boost economic activity. And that's why the devolution of resource to the actual constituencies is very critical. However, for that to have an impact, a positive impact, is this is what Dr. Kasonso is talking about, all of us, are Dr. Tom is talking about. We need to ensure that that money is, is used properly and is used in such a way that it actually generates economic activity and a multiplier effect. If mm -hmm. we end up in a situation where most of the people who are going to be uh, getting paid under the Constitutional Development Fund are foreigners hiding behind Zambians, there'll be no positive impact. 
You understand me? So we need to see a positive impact at the local level. Uh, I can tell you something. Uh, since you are an education uh, person, you said you're from human resource background. Zambia, the good thing about Zambia, you know that Kaunda left us, left us uh, trades training institutes in all the provinces of Zambia. All the provinces of Zambia have got a vocational trades training institute that can teach young people plumbing, bricklayer, uh, mecha uh, uh, mechanic for fixing cars, all sorts of vocational training, agricultural engineering, all sorts. Okay. Now, we have a government and a president who believes in education. So, one of the things we can also do is to ensure that at the constituency district level, let's train our young people. Instead of these young people fighting to be on bus stations and whatever, let's get them into vocational training institutes. You know, they get, they learn there, and then we can allocate a certain amount of money at the constitutional level to say, okay, those who are coming out with a certificate from these trades training institutes will be given a 10%, uh, how can you say, a procurement um, uplift eh, to ensure that they can be given some contracts that will enable them to start their own businesses. Or you can also say companies that employ graduates who are locally based, locally resident, and have graduated from, let's say, from Lukasha Trades Training Institute in Kasama, they'll be given jobs, preference uh, for jobs in those companies. There are a lot of things that we can do, but all these things need people who are focused, who are passionate, and want to see that this government succeeds. That's how you are going to make sure this budget is executed and is executed in such a way that it will create the impact. We've got the doing, basics, right? Um, We've Frank, got the just basics. A minute. Uh, Frank, sorry. I have Patrick with a question. Yeah, but, but Trevor, hey, you've said a lot. You guys have said a lot of things. What I want, there were two questions I had, but Trevor, before you go. One of them, you've touched a bit of it, which is the, the physical uh, discipline. Because for this budget to succeed, there should be stringent monetary and physical discipline. On the physical part, I'm, I'm confident Musokotwade um, uh, will do something. But we don't have a bank governor, the monetary side. So what sort we of do. bank governor do we need for, yeah. so that this budget succeeds? Because we also yeah. need the monetary uh, uh, yes. uh, discipline. As of, as of yesterday. The bank of Zambia, and the two of them yes. need to work together. Correct. As of yesterday, the Bank of Zambia governor has been ratified. Uh, Dr. Okay. Denny Kalalia. Yes, as mm -hmm. of yesterday, he's been ratified. The Secretary of Treasury has also been ratified, uh, Felix Kulukusa. And these two are going to work very well together to ensure, because Felix is the controlling officer of the whole government system. Okay? Yes. And as then the Secretary second question, Treasury, Matreba, yeah. before you go. This is, a, yes. this is a food for thought. We've been talking about expenditure, everything, but we haven't talked about... One of the things you've touched... Revenue. About, yeah. which, is, which is the trade... Um, skills, but yes. Trevor, when you look at the UK, when I was when I was coming to the UK, in Zambia, I worked yes. for BP and you know those big companies. When you come to the UK, more than fifty percent of the people are employed by small companies. Yeah, plumbers. Just hold on, just hold on. I've got noise in the background. Let me just tell. Okay, so let me jump in on that yeah, one. Let me, let me finish. Let me finish. So we need to invest money in the plumbers and uh, and um, you know the trades people. Bring the vocational, and, yeah, trades. Yeah, yes, train yes. Them and also artisans, train them, artisans, and train them how to pay tax. This this is where I'm coming now to the revenue part. There is room for improvement. When I look at Zambia, by, by Trevor, when I'm in the UK and come to Zambia. I can see that Zambia has got the potential to to you know we can broaden that uh, revenue. Yes, you yes, know. we can. I'll give we you an can. example, but, but, but Trevor, uh, let me let me just say. I'll give you an example. You I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish. This is just food for thought, by, by Trevor. Yes. That, you know, in the budget, they are saying somebody who is earning four thousand five hundred. Over, yeah. over 4,500 won't pay yeah. tax. But Trevor, below, I, below know people, I know people who keep in cocoa 
and they earn hundred thousand a month. They don't pay yeah, a single yeah. tax. So yeah. why can't we start a system like the UK self assessment? Who womba afidaba assessed through uh, pay as you in? Who she womba afidaba registered to a government department? Why she but to womba? And and the reason to womba ni ine takwa ten store or takwa tama skills or such. Now, whoever does business, now the market, now everywhere, should be assessed by the taxman. Thank you so much, Papa. Yes, because but, no, but, yeah. but people are taking cocoa five hundred per month. Yeah, that yeah, no, I understand. 000, that's like five hundred thousand no. quarter, and they don't pay yeah. a single tax. Yeah, but remember, remember, Papa Patrick, we can't do everything in one budget. Okay, and I agree with you. Yeah. Thought. Going yes, forward, yes, let's, let's yes, yes. Look, look. Uh, the, I I read uh, an internal memo that the commissioner, the new commissioner for ZRA, has written, and he has told his um, staff and everyone to say, look, we need new ideas, you know, so that we can align the organ ZRA into the vision of the new government. So and, and uh, the goodness, is the yes, to go. the the goodness. Look, the, listen, my brother. The goodness about this government is that. We are free to comment, to suggest, to make proposals. No one is stopping us, okay? Yes, we may sometimes speak, we may say something that might upset our, our friends, but that is life, you know? You, you know, like I always say, if you want to make everyone happy, sell ice cream. Don't be a leader, okay? Go and sell ice cream, then everyone will be happy, yeah? because the ice cream is sweet, okay? Mm. So... When, when you are, yes, when you are in leadership, you must be prepared to listen to both positive and negative criticism, all right? Okay? But the most important thing is that whatever your criticism is, whether it's positive or negative, this government will not take you to jail. You know, I was chairman of Center for, for Policy and Trade, okay? Center, I mean, Center for Policy and Development. Oh, Isaac will beat me up for making a mistake. I was chairman of the board for four years. And in 2017, yes, 2017, in my last year of chairmanship of the board, three of my staff were arrested in Kitwe by the police for discussing the budget. What we're doing right now, three of my staff were arrested. And she in, 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 uh, you know, yeah, no, yeah, that it think, can't happen. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I think uh, we we need to zero in also on. Um, uh, the the top down thinking um, fiscal discipline as far as the policies of the government and the budget is concerned is built into the structure of the programs. It's not something that Dr. Msogotwane or the Bank of Zambia government is going to impose on the country or this fiscal discipline. Uh, it must be built in uh, into the programs and the, uh, the policies of the government. For example, if you are sending 25,000, 25 mi uh, um, uh, a million uh, to the constituency, that's full employment for the accountant because the accountants all over in each constituency, there is going to be an accountant attached to that. So I just want my profession also to smile in Zambia at this budget, it's the accountant's full employment budget. But the accountant is critical to fiscal controls and putting in place the internal controls that are required to keep within spending limits and Correct. the purposes of the funding. Mm -hmm. So it, it is the way these programs That's, and um, these expenditure mechanisms are structured that are You're going right. to bring about fiscal yes. discipline. It's not yes. a conversation with the Bank of Zambia or the attitude of the Minister of Finance over Mashalengi, right. your government. The other yeah. thing I wanted to comment on is... Uh, All right. Uh, the other thing I wanted to comment on was the... Make it a quick one, Make it okay. a quick one, okay. okay. All right. Uh, uh, thank you very much. This has been... This has been a two-hour presentation of TV Bakwetu. Yes. And Mr. Trevor Simumba, Mr. Trevor Simumba has been our lead discussant tonight uh, because this is his uh, yeah. uh, uh, subject we'll area. Now, it's not that we don't have economists and accountants on TV Bakwetu family, but of course we do bring in a fresh perspective, a perspective that 
um, uh, that that comes from 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 uh, subject area specialists, and so I'll all show for patu no no. This is what we are going to do. We are going to excuse our guests because the two of wire. Untanch, baka kani okuisa. Exactly. The masabu at one hour. Elu muaweka dika for three hours. Baka kana. That's true. Jai se pantu. You people. La Barbara, next time. Premises. Ah, good one. Yes, definitely. Um, uh, viewers, we have been uh, debunking the budget with our expert. Ah, she's frozen. Oh yeah, she's frozen. Right, well, well, thank so, you. So, Mr. Simumba, thank you very much for enlightening our viewers uh, throughout. Thank you. Now, uh, what we tell our viewers is, if we are not ZNBC, we are not Zesco, we are not any of these state-run enterprises, if we just yeah. run on stars, on memberships, on subscriptions, and everything okay. else. So there is this thing that is known as subscription. So uh, particular citizens of our country and other supporters, they can click on a certain button as the comments are coming, and then they become monthly supporters. Right now, the membership is about three dollars for ninety-nine cents. So above okay. diaspora, above young fat in diaspora, you know, yes. they buy yes. coffee. Coffee over yes. over diaspora. Uluchelo coffee three dollars. Hey. Especially the professor, the professor has also a fine. Okay, very good. We put the money where the mouth is. But exactly, <laughs> that's the way it should be. <laughs> because we have one seventy five thousand on the Elias Mosha page. So oh, okay. Fantastic. One seventy five thousand subscribers. That's what we want to, to do. Quit. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Once we grow that number, we can bring exciting programs. Now, if you Trevor Simumbanga Moisapa program, you'll be you'll be extremely happy. Imagine yes, coming to a program here, Kweba, that they have quite enough and enough fan base. Could you meet them? Ah. So now, ah. so now we want to, <laughs> we want to grow it. No, which that double our budgets and everything else. So, one say mwe mwe vale onfwa, please. Click that button, become a monthly subscriber, and be part of something big, something huge, something wonderful, something that is happening in the new dawn. Yeah, amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ms. Mr. Simumba. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you too. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, Bye. Thank you Thank so you. much. Have a good night. And keep supporting Zambia. Keep supporting. Dr. Tommy, you need to come back home. Eh? <laughs> Isn't he home? But <laughs> No, me, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> no, I'm fine. 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 No, No, I'm fine. 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 <laughs> One of the things that has happened today with this budget is, um, you see, when we were supporting, and Mamusha, we, ended... we are still alive, huh? we are still alive. Yeah, um, yes. Was you feeling dead under the film? Feel God feeling alive. My friend, did I come to the party? The party, also. Apologies. Number number here is the thing. Here is the thing. When we were endorsing this candidates, this candidacy and this political party we had no idea of how effective they are going to be now to alipsana ko pano no in the past because of the initial fear we were quite concerned number 
with this budget, uh, it shows some very, very positive things, and we are extremely happy. Inepano kwe nani ntemwa? Nangunde moneka uafita on the video, but I'm very, very happy. Ni video of ye. I don't seem to get the lighting right while I'm here. But ngana wake la moku kau gari pamande, the lighting will be okay and you'll be happy with me. So bear with me for now. And so we are we are extremely excited about uh, about what has happened. Gladys, what do you think? In a Monday, I'm so excited about the budget as well. And uh, therefore, I think our speed coffee quite quick since the budget has been um, put in place. We are still in the in the way forward of being avocado at some point. Uh, so everyone is in there and that's the exciting part and um, also i wanted to comment uh, even though now i have a trevor na, na, uh, frank i wanted to comment concerning uh, education you know, education is actually not for everybody. But in this case, since uh, Valle later got free education, I saw somebody commenting to say that, uh, uh, are we going to be receiving uh, free lunch in Akuma School? Uh, no. The problem with us for Zambia, to our little more free, free. When we are free, we are going to be able to go to the concert. We are going to be able to go to the concert. Today, your fiance, you are free, and that's really not that's that's the thing we are trying to get rid of. Um, bringing in education, it's uh, good. Uh, like I said, that education is not for everybody. We all run on a different pace. And uh, the essence of bringing in education. Um, it's to, 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 to phase out the, the, the Zambia where we have Abantu, Abashai, Ama illiterate. So we want to have the people who are able to read and write. At least in Gavai South Kakomu grade nine. And then they feel like, okay, this is not for me. But then they can go another way, quite in a full way. Full way, panono, panono. Then they get the vocation. But the vast areas, what they are interested in, until Gavai South Kakomu grade nine, until Gavai University. Uh, in right just in the different way but it's up to the institutions okay allocate that budget to use their initiative and how they can empower those uh, the young people especially so that they also able to reach far with education there are those who are those are also on a different pace. So it's included. It's, everyone is included. So that education, we want to be on the top in Africa, whereby at least everyone is able to read. Not power, youth power um, uh, empowerment. You can't even fill, out, fill in the form. Why am I going no, that's not what we want. We want somebody who can just have at least even basic education, free education. No one should be left out. That's what I would, I would, I would, I would say. Now, I think, I think for me, what really stands out is, you see, we had 50,000 graduates here at teacher. Now, effective immediately, about 30,000, oh, about 50,000, but about 30,000 of them, can she, they are going to dust off all their certificates. They are going to be extremely happy and they are going to get new jobs, effective in January. This is remarkable. This has never happened in the history of our country. Now, of course, uh, I'm a logistics to 30,000. It's not easy. Right? That's on that one. On that uh, one. I just was on, on the teachers. I uh, know, Dr. Barbara, go on. I jumped in. Yeah, uh, I was going to Barbara and Percy didn't have much chance. Um, yeah. So I think we can have I, I just want to say hi to everybody and uh, whoever is watching. I personally want to represent our group D and our group E because from the time we've been talking, 
everybody seems to be speaking to the intellectuals and the doctors and the lawyers and the accountants. And I want to represent the lovely lady that Vamusha took a picture with uh, from uh, John Mount Pubic uh, Market <laughs> to make it sound a little bit better. Yeah. If she, if, if if she had John saved Chilin. money on, on her phone to say oh, that oh, yeah. to listen to the budget, I think she's lost right now because we've made it so complicated for our group D. But I would like to tell them that the most important thing they should take from the budget is that I'm a teacher as well. community. Ministry of Health money. Now there's been talk of is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen as a Glass is half full kind of person. I never worry about what if limbi ngana fumina pa window di bimoto kaya I always think about how rich way I'm going. I'm not. I'm not worried about whether they'll they'll mismanage the money. I'm believing that by the time we've reached where we are now, there's already a system in place to safeguard that money that's going to go into the community. So for now, the best news that should happen to anybody. Okay. Disclaimer, I'm a UPAD, so I have to sell this as much as I can. The most important thing is it's unprecedented. It's never happened before. These teachers have been languishing mm. in their houses without jobs, without anything. The Minister of Health, people have been just, you know, negative. They don't know what's going on. They are now going back to have those jobs. Is it going to be implemented? It is because it's unprecedented. We have intelligent people before i finish just the last one because we have my person and everybody else somebody did mention that we need to i think it's um, um our guest he did mention that we need to have really intelligent people to make sure that this goes into place the ones with degrees and lawyers i'm a bit not so happy about that because i'm a mother with only one child my children in zambia the street kids when you want them Elect, when you want the seats, when you want to be voted in, you would give them T-shirts, they go and vote. I want those kids to be guided to manage that money in their locations. chairman You, the educated people, can manage, can over, oversee them, and then they manage that money. The same way, in, if you come to, to the UK, people like saying where I am in the UK, in the US, most of the people in the UK don't have degrees in the words in the words that manage these things. They just have a system that works where you everybody knows if I'm going to pay this, I'm going to pay it here. If I'm going to use a bus, I'm going to pay um, uh, go for the bus ticket. If I'm going to pay for my account, I'm going to use my card, I'm going to pay here. Those systems are the ones that are managed by the intellectuals. Open up here to over to you. That's a very good example. That's a very good example. I just so, thirty seconds. So, have I frozen up? Oh, oh, more push, more push. I was going to say no. I was going to say just to add on to what Barbara said. I said just to add on to what Barbara said. When it comes to education. I've got more qualifications than my boss, and my boss gets paid a lot of money. So we've got to be very careful the way we say only educated people to do something. If somebody's got the skill and has got the ability to do it, we have to ask ourselves how can we involve those people in running the economy. Right. So, so all in all, this is a very positive budget. We still are going to see how it's going to be implemented. But of course, it almost doubles last last year's budget, and so and so. Walafu ayolo piyoko walafu magatwishi, but ulu piyel wala monika, and so and so. They've done very well. I think we commend the new dawn, the new dawn government. Ara ko ena nishim biya bantu mo. Echo kanch tuare chitera file fe tuare chita. Moland wakoba tu. We wanted to see wakoba tu buteko. Watampa koko pala na kone fe fe kule chita. And so and so, we are extremely happy. Um, um, and so won't say mwe, won't say mwe, mwe wa chitire support no kuvota, kuvota la ba new dawn, you did very well. No, but unless, unless Percy has his own other ideas, because Percy <laughs> had, 
And I do notice when she sits like this, she get concerned. No, no, I'm just happy with the budget. I'm just happy with the budget. The, the, for me, the most thing I've liked about the budget is the uh, CDF. If I'm correct, the, 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 the pronunciation of it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I was quite impressed from one 1.6 million. By some of it, 24.1 million to make it 25 million. Mm -hmm. But the only problem as uh, the panel alluded to, it, it's the management now, because those people, they have never had that type of money to, to run. So that's another thing. I was in, I, for me, I'm happy. I've got nothing to say. That's the only good. thing I, I'll say, my checklist is out. I'll just start ticking what's being done now. <laughs> that's all I can that, say. That's <laughs> really good. Amunsha, just to add, I've just been hanging out with our YouTube viewers, and I had to explain that Bapesi, Barbara, they were meant to come last because because there's like, oh, my pesta, my lalanda, puna, my barber. Just to, uh, just to clarify, I was supposed to have the first two hours of the program with uh, uh, Mr. Simuma and Dr. Casonzo and the others. And then Vapesi and the rest of the family come last. And then uh, Dr. Muncha takes over the show. So don't worry, Vapesi and uh, Let's just calm down, hold your horses, we have a plan. So I suggest we should be sharing our plan with the audience when we just start. Because no, no. Even, when, <laughs> even when you share your plans with the audience, they hey. always want Bapesi. They Bap want <laughs> Tama Pesi to say something. And, and, and so... And so if he doesn't speak, they get extremely annoyed. And so, and so to, all the, to all of our fans here, Percy is one of the most valid members of our team, mm -hmm. and he has to speak. Yes. And then there are those that want to see Bamukelabai say something. Yes. And I think they will begin making noise about Ben Abba Mkelabai. If Bam Kelabai does not say anything, there will be total war. Total there will. Chaos. Absolutely. Now, <laughs> Dr. Barbara, now then another quite a fan. Dr. Barbara should say something. I think I need me. My best ever quite a special fans, loyal fans. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Bam Kelabai. Yes, Bam Kelabai, uh, we have a budget. Oh, Bam Dala, in there. <laughs> they say in Lozi we say kaka savini konji kasapo. I hope you understand that. Uh, what do you say to? You can help me on the wasali wasali. You always have a way of butchering these sayings, like chua <laughs> minagalo kuluma. Kuluma <laughs> imwa. <laughs> he actually went viral on one of those one <laughs> day. <laughs> Flipped so, wrong, wrong I'm, way. I'm right. trying to, I'm trying to borrow Vasata and Va 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 Umine Wat Sushi Umine Wat Spinya. Don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I'm I'm so delighted, Mwandin. I'm so happy, and uh, this was um, we were caught unaware because we were thinking. This new dawn has no clue on what they are doing. And uh, there we are. As I think uh, our honorable MP, our resident MP on this forum gave us a hint, but we did not take it seriously. And now I understand what he meant. Mm -hmm. And today was a, such a, I think every Zambian, including the PF, they are shocked. They are like surprised to say, oh my goodness, how could he, even when there's this <laughs> financial. <laughs> oh, man. I wanted to put At in vale the salula. Vale salula. No, no, for Kalimbo. I didn't know that PF Mwale Salula. It's our time to do what? Oh, Salula. M. Quai. How are you? Just yes, say, you were talking about our resident doctor. I would like to take this moment to wish our resident doctor a very happy birthday. It's his birthday today, and this is why he can't be uh, sorry. MP or doctor? 
resident member of parliament of Kankoyo. Apologies. It's oh, his birthday. Happy birthday to him. I know. So if we could just say a quick happy birthday. This is why he's not with us today. He's he was supposed to be with us tonight. Congratulations. Uh Kratulera Medagen from Scandinavia. Uh your honorable uh Maveta, we love you, we miss you, we love you, we love all your presentation. Otherwise, Mwandin budget yen and I to be kamumu diaktirati. It's it's just a pity <laughs> that in a in a in, in a budget yan sangira you know some issues like quite some problems for family issues. Eh? So apart today, I just lost my brother-in-law and I'm like, oh, 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 no. No. I, I'm, in the, I'm, I'm in the mix now, like, oh. oh. Therefore, I look to celebrate budget and then quite some family issues like, remember Yahweh? Please, sometimes, you want take any of my come to my breaks sometimes. Sorry, I'm not blaspheming, but at least it's, um, it's a wonderful feeling in my heart today mm -hmm. to hear that uh, the, 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 the new dawn, na budget yavo. Really, I was listening. I was playing it over and over, over and over. I was like, "This is this is what we have been missing. Why have we been denied all this beautiful opportunity all this time? And how are the PF today? Walungu, walungu. Muyikutwa chwanika cheko. When you hear such, how do you feel? What does that make you feel? You know, just that, it feels like he should even resign from the PF presidential or even from the from even from the from the presidential from the ex president retirement. What's the fear retired? Okay, in a firek teine. Bali fireke if you take no ma mrefu aya ba fireke if you have president wa PF but also ba fireke na for retirement fine so you want to be double dab fiance fie ba fireke fiance let him just go to bed and he rest and and just say okay guys i was not just pretend i was not here ah we mandin ah this was an embarrassment to them and ba bali ndi ta monjai za tinsha kanwe ko na aleka and the three more are going to sign you know, budget. I've been a Lusambo Parliament, but no, we want to why ratification? Why should we ratify the B, the, hmm. the, the, the Bank of Zambia? Blah blah. He was with us, but yet he was sleeping with them. And uh, where do you get the audacity? You. <laughs> Yesterday, Gladys made our, our YouTube viewers laugh so much. I see most of the people didn't know what we we're talking about at Vadic to apologize. They were asking, What do you mean? Uh, and Gladys told them, So everyone believes that Vashta Sila apologized at the back and weapon of food. Now, I call one. Highly unlikely. <laughs> Highly unlikely. Yeah. 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 So, 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 so that's, that's how many teachers are going to be hired. But there is also another number of about 11,000 workers. And I know Jerome did mention in the first segment of our program. Yeah, 11,000 hospital workers. 11,000. Mm. That's, That's amazing. So we're going to have more doctors. So number can she move a doctor? He says to me, "Mwaka tayi ako ba ti mwaya ko yuke yaraleka." Mmm. You know who I am. We're going to pay a lot of lift. We should have a minibus. No, ma. Imwe. Ine ba Patrick. Ba Patrick na chafu kadi chafu na lele ba Patrick. Na chafu at balande po how um the budget is in comparison to the UK budget. But ba chafu mwe chongo na 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 fundu na ba Patrick. Ba Patrick le na ba fundu wa na ba fundu le lo. Ba chafu excited. Got in Jerome. Ba chafu ba kada le lo ba Patrick. Right. Okay, so 11,000 health workers, mm -hmm. um, this is amazing, and increased budgetary allocation. My only concern is that the controlling officer of our Ministry of Health is the same controlling officer under whose watch money at the Ministry of Health disappeared. So, so that is not an exciting part. I'm sorry, but, um, but uh, we must continue talking about this. Dimbini no kulanda, dimbishakula landishia. Bantu. I think on that on that point, Dr. Musha, at the moment, uh, not mentioning what it is, at the moment we're still having problem with the Ministry of Health with certain issues. 
and without changing the personnel in that Ministry of Health, it does not give okay, me right. confidence. It does not give me confidence. I was in a meeting with a group of people and it was a group of people who were frustrated and at the end of that meeting, we had to we had to encourage them to say, let's keep doing what we're doing. Mm. There's not, it doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence. And in what we've had today, when it comes to the Ministry of Health, we know what has, it, what has, what has happened there and they need to be an overhaul of personnel if we're going to see any of the plans that are coming to place. It does not matter how good a budget is. It does not matter how good a plan you have. If you've got the wrong people to execute that, the plan, the budget means absolutely nothing. The right, right people make the, no, make no, the budget. No, when my lawyers learn that enforcement, if we if to learn that implementation is very key. And you cannot have uh, a cadre Baba PF as controlling officers, then we are in trouble. Mm, yeah. You're right. But Tommy wants mm -hmm. to add something. But Tommy. And then, and then ba, ba Linda, you wanted me to, to say something about ah, the UK. Shat me, the woman is Yeah. Yeah. Guys, you know, Bamusha, I think quite what do they call it? That he, but maybe that this is via Lemba. Plagiarism. Yeah. Budget Yava Yava UK. Na budget Yaku Zambia Nas Palana. By UK, they they're talking about three things in their budget. They're talking about stronger growth, they're talking about public finances and employment. So Lolesha you know and they are also talking about physical discipline because of the uh, the, the huge debt you know the the minister of finance or the exchequer has been given a role uh, the physical law uh, the physical uh, dis, uh, rule that he needs to track the underlying debt in order for it to fall under uh, the GDP in line with the GDP. So the UK is facing a huge debt. Zambia is facing a huge debt. And, and, and also we talked about physical discipline here. So the yeah. two budgets are, are more or less similar. The only difference is that the UK has got a, a, a broader base, you know, you know, in you know, tax base compared to Zambia. And that's the point I was trying to to tell so, uh, 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 Trevor that that's the next way forward. Every right. Zambian who does business in the market should be self-assessed. Right. Because uh, uh, self-assessment, uh, Mulela and Dati said, yeah, but we don't have to pay taxes. Yes. Yes. So, uh, 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 Mulela, there should be three types of people in Zambia. And that's how the government is going to capture our statistics. And also support the poor. There should be three types of people. Ever watched our UK, our Bomba. So those are assessed through uh, pay as you earn. Our Shibomba, ever number many pilama benefits. Now, what there should be a reason why it's available one better because the UK now is trying to discuss. They are trying to reduce the benefits to encourage people to go to work. <laughs> Unless there is a reason, yeah, but my mushai motor, my conto kama wakona fiose te tumuombe. Yeah, and then three, our ibombela. Now what they should be assessed? Whether tali dipira nangwa la dipira. No, my mushai. I'll give an example. This is not fair. If we our womba up to four thousand five hundred, after that we fido kulipira tax. Ina ino abantu ba taken koko every yeah. month. A chenko for one thousand. You know how much is that? Hundred thousand yeah, kwacha. It's, it's a lot. Which means tax. Yeah. tax. Yeah. Yeah. So who, who, who is who, who earns more money here? Who for a five thousand kwacha? A filokulipila tax. Mm. No no panga hundred thousand per month. After that, when my expenses here, I panga a profit here thirty thousand. So why? How come that one is, doesn't pay? So that's the yeah. next stage now. Every Zambian. Whether the market in should be self-assessed as long as 
ni self employed and the key is to broaden the tax base so and that you broaden the tax base paying taxes the better want, yes and that's where mm. the uk has got the catch the edge we've got the edge the edge because the tax the, the, the tax base dr. is Tommy. so broad yeah dr Tommy. yes doc yes doc and then we can quit mwila lolela nga mwa lolela chibara le katawa Ramusha, I just wanted to add um, something. Just one second. No, 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 just one point. Just one point. Give me that one. Just one second. Ramusha. <laughs> Today, I I received inkata from the taxman. Actually, to allow to increase tax yobe, because taxman discovered that in one month, at at income through through three sources. It was like, no, 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 no. I've never said Ramesh, why should I increase non tax here? Because one source came from where I do, you know, where I, where I sit as a, as a non executive director. Then the other source, because I was moving from one job to another, the taxman picked up the, the, the salary from the old job and the new job. And then the taxman says, no, Bachirufia, we are going to increase your, your, your tax. So these are the systems we need in Zambia. Yeah, yeah. Lunch, lunch will to... be on you, but Patrick, lunch will be on you. You've got three sources of income. Dr. Tommy, please come in. No, but, no, but before Dr. Tommy comes in, why is Bamkelaba is seated like that? Dr. Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want to mention before I I touch on the budget, mm -hmm. just to mention that if there are any sons of the soil that Zambia has who have what we call as a added value to the prosperity of what we are about to enjoy now, it's uh, our founder, Dr. Elias Mosha. You know, what we are discussing here, don't undermine it. It goes very far even on helping good governors. Mm. So when we have got such sons of the soil, please, New Dawn, tap into the talent because this is just one example of innovation. People who can make this budget be realized. So it's not far. Get from what you have and get going. Now, what I wanted to mention was uh, political real is real. I mean, political will is real. PF never thought, no, none of us actually ever thought will be having a stable Zambia because of the political will which was broken down. Now, this has just told us that this is real. And uh, when we talk of the, I looked at the CDF fund. What is important there, we have to look at the activities that will be taking place. Dr. Barbara, you talked of the group D. How can the group D enjoy the CDF? It's the activities, you know, upgrading of the schools, the infrastructure, the community borehole, all those activities, building of primary schools, all those that will be happening in CDF. Vanamayo, Vakasangwapo. So it's really impressive of everybody. I thought I should also touch on the, the growth in the production of... Uh, to end the poverty. When we increase the production, like we expand farming, then poverty is going to be a thing of the past. So my colleagues who feel, no, we are left out because the this budget says, okay, I'm taking off the load on you. The 1,000 kwacha you have been paying for school fees is off you. That 1,000 kwacha per term is in your pocket, you know? It's, it's very, very important that uh, they've also put production of minerals, you know, at the center. This is how someone asked earlier on to say, 
How does Botswana do, for example, with the bears? 50-50 share. The bears owns 50 and, the, and Botswana 50. And Botswana owns 15% in Anglo-America and the bears. So all what I'm trying to say is this economic transformation will create jobs and will, the, the minister has also said the copper will be made lucrative on the small micro enterprises. The key is that the aim is to boost and have all these micro enterprises access the markets, both okay. locally and yes. outside. Yes, Doc. Dr. Tommy. Yes. Um, on the copper, yes. they are targeting to raise the production from 800 is it 800 oh yeah from 800 metric tons yeah every year to 3000 metric tons that's to 3 almost, million to 3 million to 3 million yeah 3 from 800000 yeah. to 3 million that is more less more, almost like anthony neloya openda the gift is huge massive so let's say it's massive <laughs> <laughs> three million is huge. <laughs> three million is huge. That's almost. It's not double because double. It's not double. Is, it, it's one thousand six hundred. It's, 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 it's two hundred and two hundred and something percent. The gaining pending. Fifty percent. But it's huh? attainable. And I was touched when I heard that the road industry has got one billion US in arrears, and we know how that came. Uh, so, but, Tom, but Dr. Tommy, please let's stay yes. on one topic first before Tommy okay. How okay. how possible is that? How possible is it to grow output from eight hundred thousand metric tons of copper to, to three to three million? You know, it's just for discipline. There has been all this. This budget was based on. There was inventory done. Inventory is done, it shows our output. But this was not accounted anywhere. It's because of stealing. We are capable of doing that. These things were not seen because of lack of transparency. Okay, so what you were saying is that Ayayon Saya 2.4 million, they were yeah. there somewhere. Oh, yes. That's why we have we saw many being fresh. Where is it coming from? Okay, Mo Muhammad. Where, where, where are we going to get the 2.4 million tons? Good evening, all. Uh, sorry, I've been waiting to, uh, for a long time to try and get on. Sorry, Linda, you did request earlier, but unfortunately, the studio is full. Uh, the budget. I have uh, mixed feelings, um, being from an accountancy background and a business background, and uh, no, forecasting on the future. On our mining sector is the question which uh, Dr. Munchia just asked. First and foremost, I think the 3 million target that has been budgeted or trying to budget for, for the future thing, it looks a bit far-fetched, but it can be attainable if we have the right discipline and the right governance in place. Remember the couple of mining companies that were in Zambia, which were uh, thrown out, KCM uh, and Mopani was taken over by the government at a one dollar uh, charge plus one point five billion dollar debt, which the government had uh, ascertained. Yet we have actually sold our futures of the copper to the Mopani uh, consortium, the the uh, the consortium that's based in uh, Switzerland under the name of uh, not Trafigura, what's the other one? Mm. Uh, uh, anyway. uh, no, the, 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 the competitors of Trafigura. Anyway, they, they, they are the ones who actually had owned Mopani and they, they had sold it. So basically, we are already in arrears because we have to, uh, the, the agreement that was signed in January, February, sometime last year or this year when Mopani was sold uh, to the Zambian government, uh was uh, very very lopsided a lot of some a lot of things didn't match right and that's uh, had a many things so that has to be dissected first obviously there are some new deposits around which needs to be revisited and i think this is where 
I think the uh, the minister is talking about trying to enroll the Zambians to run these places, uh, and uh, I think uh, it will take time because I don't think it's going to happen very overnight because copper is a. But my point is, and that's a, my my point. I've always been trying to tell people that we are we are just selling send, sending this uh, cathode copper cathode outside. We should have value addition based uh, exports. You know, and uh, that will create jobs. That will create uh, um, sort of the economy, local economy being vibrant. And uh, you know, there's be a lot of money flowing, like how Nigeria is doing. And uh, we should we should look at it. Uh, we have uh, many different stream uh, of uh, potentials if we put our act together. This this budget, remember, budget is just a written thing. The implementation as uh, what uh, Patrick was saying and Dr. Uh, was it Timothy who just passed uh, who just went away was mentioning about how having uh, the implementation stage well managed, well coordinated and most of all well policed. If we don't police this implementation of the budget into its different uh, segments, different sectors, this budget will mean nothing to us. trust me because we will be then chasing, for money, money that will be missing, and uh, you know we need to get our, uh, in, as an accounting term, internal controls and financial controls in place before this implementation takes place. There are so many things I could start punching holes in the budget, but that we'll wait for when we are not fully live. But, um, but so yeah. <clears throat> how do you think that can be done to make sure that there's no mismanagement of these funds? Change of personnel. We don't have the right personnel managing this thing. We've still got the personnel that were Kalankas in a way, as we uh, rightly so. We need we need to uh, have the will. The, 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 um, the government of the day today has the will to put a budget which is uh, people friendly, empowering uh, youth, empowering many, many different things. You know, it's trying to talk about vocational training, whatever, you know. But the people that are going to conduct this um, implementation are from the uh, personnel that were from the old old era. So the new dawn era has to have its own personnel uh, supervising this. I mean, we have seen this, and we've been all, uh, Paquito has always been talking for a long time about the personnel not uh, being moved fast enough in many uh, many things like ACC, DEC, you know, including appointments in PSC's Minister of Health is a disaster. I mean, Frank will tell you <laughs> where we go. We are heading on that one. But, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Munsha uh, rightly point, pointed out that, you know, a couple of weeks ago we were lamenting on many things. And uh, we need to get the budget uh, running together with the political will, which is there now. But now we should have... The, the the bureaucratic will to implement it, you know, and the main thing is change of personnel. We have to do it. Um, the government has to do it for for everybody to participate. If the will comes from uh, from the uh, from the top, then it will start moving. Because otherwise, we'll be sending this money to these uh, CDC funds and all that. How much will how much of it will go to its intended intended benefit uh beneficiaries i you know percentage wise we i would say probably 30 percent will go and 70 percent will leakage at the current status you know i mean i stand to be corrected but going by going by our previous sort of uh, situation you know there are so many things we can start shouting like i, I don't want to start sounding a party pooper here but the situation where, where we are now this two three months right it was a teething problem. You know, it's a honeymoon period for the government. Now the work has to begin and the work has to start in earnest with its right policies to be implemented. Perfect uh, budget, as our resident MP was always saying, you know, be proud when you see the budget. Yes, it's a nice, a nice budget in many things, but there are certain things so many left. I mean, export incentives, for example, there's no export incentive. So what makes me, I am a businessman, if I want to do something, if I don't get an export incentive, what, what good is it for me to really export when South Africans who come and f you know, flood our market, you know, is there any protection for people like us who are producing in, in Zambia? You know, all those things had to be highlighted in the budget. I mean, training, for example, in UK, I'm based in UK, 
and Frank and everybody, um, Frank and Patrick will uh, agree with or will know about it. You know, when the COVID came in, they had follow places, but before then they had in in uh, introduced. You know, the youth who were not employed, they were sort of encouraged to um, the companies were encouraged to take them on on internship, which the government sort of um, you know ar arranged in such a way that the companies who take these interns were paid for either through the uh, through tax submission uh, tax deductions. You know, and you know it's a benefit. So the economy was uh, driving at the moment. Uh, the unemployment figures in the UK is pretty high and is worrying. The budget last yesterday in the UK was actually highlighting that one of the radical things they Mohammed, are doing. Yeah. Some, something that we have to remember is we are probably about 10, 15 years behind. So sometimes a comparison between the coup. No, two, two no, no, no. I, I'm not, I'm not really going there. I'm not going to that. I'm, I'm only, I'm only, I'm only coming to a point where, where we have, you know, Patrick or to you had mentioned that you know during the Kaunda era we had vocational training centers in every provinces, every district had it. You know they could teach plumbers, tilers, and I remember it. I'm talking about the 60s and the 70s. I was a youth then, so I used to see many different things. And they were they were actually running. You know, those infrastructures there. This is what HH is trying to get through to ensure that these youths who are now fighting for for uh, you know uh, uh, the bus stations and everything like they should be encouraged to go there but our the budget did not actually cater for this vocational training incentives that's my point you know so it, we could not be 15 we could be 100 years beyond britain but the implication uh, the, the implementation of our budget you know on a current state of affairs of where zambia is right we should you know be uh, looking at those those angles as well that's that's what I say at the moment. Thank you, uh, uh, thank you for 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 that. Uh, Beauty, are you there? Uh, Beauty, Beauty would like to be kept in the background, Vamunsha. Because because what I th what I thought was I thought I thought it was late in Canada, but but no, Canada it's daytime, and so. And so, so I was wondering because it's very easy to be here, and um, and you are not available. Uh, Kangwa. I've been following the the talk in the background, and I think it's very interesting, and a lot of topics have been covered. The highlight for me, in particular, was the announcement that PSV licenses will be extended from one year to five years. Um, having worked in road freight for a very long time, I have a soft spot for any pronouncements in road freight. So that's a very good move. It's progressive. It's something that we had been talking about, and it's nice to see that it's been implemented. And also the removal of duty on imports of refrigeration trucks. There's currently a deficit on refrigeration uh, trucks in Zambia. So I hope people, locals in particular, will tap into this removal of duty so that we can fill the gap which is currently in the transport sector. And then also free education. I know this has been exhausted, but I would also like to add my opinion on it. My opinion is that this will finally give an opportunity to those talented, but... Um, talented but coming from low-income families, those grade sevens who are left behind, not because tabakwa tamano, but because their parents couldn't afford the annual fees of 3,000 kwacha for boarding fee. Umuai Chowa Bakseshake needs to go to Mongo for boarding fee, for boarding school. I think those have been catered to. And they'll actually have a fighting chance to reach grade 12 and then compete for bursaries. And then we'll see more Msokotwanis from disadvantaged backgrounds getting the opportunities to change the world. And then it's unfortunate that Vasimumba has gone. I wanted him to give us insight on how he as a trade expert sitting at EU, at AU rather, sees opportunities in this budget to close AMA gaps on the export side. I know Zambia has a big export deficit, so it would have been nice to see what opportunities he sees 
in this budget. So maybe next time we have him on, it will be nice to hear his views. And also right. it's nice to see that decentralization is actually taking place. A lot of governments in the previous past have always talked about decentralization, but this government has actually put their money where their mouth is by putting money into the hands of constituencies. So my only concern is, has government given them the sufficient capacity? Have they built their capacity to handle such responsibility, such money? Has that been handled? That's my only concern. But I'm really happy to see decentralization actually taking place. Yeah, and yeah, it I'm appears, hopeful. It appears like regarding decentralization, there will be several pieces of legislation that will be coming through to actually actualize it. Um, this perhaps explains the reasons why they've not appointed uh, district commissioners. Uh, it's because they want to appoint them at the same time as when uh, the decentralization plan is actually implemented. Um, the UPND manifesto itself does seem to suggest that they are going to harmonize the office of the town clerk, who is more like the chief executive of, of, of councils, with with DCs. I just don't know how that is going to work, but maybe they're still trying to work on it. Like I like I tell you, you see, me I'm a supporter of the of the ruling party, but I wasn't involved in it simply uh, design of the manifesto. We've adopted I you, you've you've adopted yeah, you've adopted me. Yeah, yeah, I adopted child. <laughs> you've, you've adopted me from where? From where you are coming from? Yeah, you are a child. Yeah. From uh, NDC. Foster yeah, parents, Atulela. we are here. <laughs> Yesterday, I ha we had the, the NDC media director, and someone phoned me up and said, why are you featuring that person? That person is not the media director for NDC. Uh -oh. So I'm really, really um, uh, concerned because, because it's difficult. Tulelwa sana. If ever Tulelwa, it's very similar to what TP is going through. It's very similar to what MMD has been going through. And it could be very similar to what uh, Patriotic Front will soon be going through. Because in the Patriotic Front, there is a group that took posters. That was great. And then somebody is standing there with a huge, huge poster campaigning. Mm. It was extremely terrible. that image was so funny. You before the triangle, I'm really issue our our Mbuiri pa pa campaign pa pa bari our pa memorial. Uh, I wanted to just uh, put up my sentiments over the budget. Uh, before uh, the budget has been okay, but I want. Tamulani, you carry on budget from Kilabai. I say I ninda nda po carry, but I wanted to just say something on the on uh, people that are trying to um, not trying to but making comparisons uh, uh, with the uh, other well developed countries like what you feel at uh, uh, zambia comparing our budget to zambia you know i i felt like uh, we should not jump the gun i wanted us to hold on zambia how old is zambia let me say something, Mam Kelevai. The point I was trying to drive home was that the fundamentals behind the two budgets 
are similar. They are both talking about growth. They are both talking about employment. They, they're both talking about reducing debt. They're both talking about physical discipline. Okay, now I was saying. Thank you. I wasn't, no, it's, I wasn't it's saying that... in terms of uh, revenue or other things or management or controlling because Zambia is far away from our, our, the UK budget for your own information is one trillion point something dollar pounds. Exactly. fundamentals behind the both budgets. I, know. I understand my brother very well. I understood you completely. I, I'm just saying that let us just learn to appreciate sometimes when good things happen in Zambia, let us not just be rushing in making now judgmentals and start making assumptions, adjustments. Let's just hold on to that thought, you know, and hold on to say, look, let's appreciate with whatever this government has done for now. It is very positive and it's very surprising. Let's hold on to that thought. Piroko Tuleya, then let's wait for the implementation aspect. Ngaba Filwa. That's when we can now come in and say, oh, you made us, you raised us, our you raised our hopes high. And no matter no, what is happening. Uh, All right, Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. 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 Uh, the name is, I think it's Mark, something oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah, Mark Cups. Is that the one? Mark Cups, that's the one. Alamairoari to pay 10 pounds or 20 pounds. So we have to yeah, recognize yeah, people know. who are giving huge, huge sums of money. Sorry, guys, to interrupt. And then Gladys wants to talk about mining. Please, Gladys. Uh, yes, please. I, no, I, I just before. want. Ah, no. <laughs> Who is Muhammad? Okay, Muhammad, when I'm with Swaku Zambi, is it Chipata? Is our Chipata brother? Everybody, Muhammad. There are so many people here that like you, and they are asking who you are. Oh, well, uh, I'm waiting for Nifunakuti Mubauze Mutinyanja. Ticho gara kuchipata, napaduwa no chipata. 1957. I'm uh, a supporter for Kukabwe Warriors. So there you are, you know. And those yeah. that will remember, that those that will remember. Uh, Godfrey Chitalu, Boniface Motowe, Gibi Zulu, Sanford Mvula, Edward Busonda, uh, Ernest Katongo, you know, then they know that they are in my era. You know, so some of these people who are asking who Muhammad is, probably they didn't even see Chitalu play football. <laughs> they are millennials. <laughs> I think after that <laughs> comment, <laughs> after that <laughs> comment, the debate is over. You are Thank Zambian. You for clarifying that. Number, we can't see the picture, Muhammad. No, my, my, my camera is playing up. I told you, uh, yeah, my camera. I'm actually getting a new phone tomorrow. So, guys, fingers crossed. Yeah. Yes. My, if, if I switch it on, it will just, the whole thing will disappear. Let me see. There, there is Muhammad. Yeah, you oh, yeah but you, this is what he keeps on doing now. Hello, but I'm on a professional level, but Muhammad yeah, I'm an I'm an accountant by profession. We ex prize Waterhouse, Cooper, Zambia, Coopers and Librarian as well, going back to before before HH joined. So I have my roots in Zambia as well. I'm in UK and I'm in Zimbabwe and obviously my heart is Zambian. And you know? he was also my mother in law's uh Accountant, one of my aunts, wow. Gwendolyn Connie's uh, accountant. Gwendolyn Connie, Gwendolyn Connie was my partner as well. Yeah. 
so it's a long history i have my my father uh, was uh, came to zambia in 1970 1921 hmm? so we are uh, third generation zambian we brought up born bred in zambia i owe my education to kaunda as i've always been saying i've been a fervent supporter of uh, unip when i was young you know i was a socialist in my my uh, you know disposition but then as i i became an accountant in england I think, you know, we learned uh, the trades of uh, being capitalism, uh, capitalist as well. But Zambia is evolving all the time, you know. So there we are. You know, that's where I'm. And by the way, I'm a Kamwala, Kamwala resident. I have uh, always stayed in Kamwala area. Uh, you know, that is my, my roots. And mm -hmm. I, I was a Kamwala secondary school a student as well. Paja, pameni paja pa Kamwala. Yeah, powerful. Because, yeah, just there. You know, Museo lot of school. Oh? Thank you. So, yeah. so that's all I wanted to intervene in. We have about six minutes. Gladys, now it's all yours. You see, that's what I was trying to do. Clear this question away and then leave it up to you, Gladys. I know that Thank Linda you. says that you had something to say. Yes, please. But mule kiokula ndechi nyanja mule mfika kwa tero muapatu kabamu. Shamule landa fecha au shicha kumwenu. Anyway, thank you so much. When my father went to Lusaka, he was like, I'm a Lusaka once a lot. He said, morning, morning, morning. Morning, thank you. Morning, thank you. You sound like him. Okay. 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 Um, I just wanted to comment a little bit on uh, on the mining uh, in uh, mining industry where the the allocation of uh, the budget has gone on, which is going to bring probably in Chito job creation. Uh, as we know, like Kiku Copper Belt, we have that uh, Black Mountain, and uh, some of us know that, uh, like by UK, UK ha is uh, phasing out the electrical, I mean, the benz benzene, uh, benzene, uh, fuel cars uh, in 2040. And as I know, in Denmark, we, they're phasing out uh, um, fueled cars in 2030, which is probably going to, 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 to attract uh the business relationship with the western world because that residue of the 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 the, the, the copper like korea tukuma black mountains those are th they're the things which they used like for 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 creating amana and kani uh for motor for electric cars probably the engineers who got in details to explain about that and i was we cannot completely do away with uh well, with the, the the foreign investment and it's about uh, bringing in the machineries because the, the big job has been done uh, digging out all those residues. So all we need, all the government needs is to put in the money and um, take all, sell all that to, to the Western world and that will boost up the economy in, in, in Zambia. I think this, it, it, it is a good thing that uh, the, the mining uh, industry is also looked up Maybe we can also look at uh, the engineers to come and explain more because as Zambia, we are quite far away from uh, from uh, implementing uh, the electrical cars. We're gonna probably come up there, but we can also um, we could we can also gain uh, by selling out the residues. And on the briefly on uh, tourism, tourism in in Zambia, tourism has been going very slow. Um, I've been in the tourism industry before, but it's like we exaggerate too much pricing and we 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 to la time here i'm a tourist because of the exaggerated prices as compared to 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 the neighboring countries like Botswana. Botswana, they don't have so much in terms of tourism apart from uh uh the big five we have a lot more to offer we can offer like a, a retreat for but Botswana example. has sand Botswana has yes, Botswana sand. has the sand dunes. Yes, but we have so much to offer. We can we can bring in like a ama retreat where we can encourage uh, to bring the the 
uh, to bring the extraordinary tourism, not the modern tourism where to Atampok later we get the, our tourists from the airports and then they drive in these uh, big vehicles. We can interact, we, have, we are rich in uh, culture. We can get our tourists, uh, like the Westerners, they like to interact with the locals. We teach them if you value how the, the lifestyle, the cultural lifestyle of uh, certain tribes, we have the chiefs, Baba Langi Shafidia, and they have to pay for that, but we have to just be reasonable in terms of pricing because that's what Ngatuamona said, the people from the outside and Nemitengo Shachinja, and we really chase away with that. I think we have to do better in terms of uh, tourism, and that's, that's, that's the area also which has to be encouraged. I think right. that is already, Thank is, you very that much. already done. In Livingston, could you achieve Mukoni? Thank, thank you very much. We are now hitting the three-hour mark. This has been a presentation of TV Bakwetu. I think this is the second three-hour program that we've had before, uh, after the elections. Before the elections, we had about three to four hours to eight hours. But this has been a three-hour long presentation. Thank you very much for having been with us for this past uh, day. And in fact, we've even entered into a new day. Keep supporting us, uh, send stars, subscribe, and everything else that is that is so good for us, for you, for you to do. Uh, good night, God bless you, and God bless our country. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. God bless. God bless you.